double D? Yeah, man. <laughs> well, turn it up, man. Let's just go in and like kill all the orcs, right? They're the bad guys. Who gives a shit? We just hack and slash and we loot their dead bodies, right? Hack and slash, kill them all, you know, conquer the infidels. Boy, that campaign sounds like a barrel of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Are you just a dream? Double D. A dream to some. A nightmare to others! As somebody who's who's opening a refrigerator and leaning in, right, is the language of a woman. Somebody who's opening the refrigerator and being cut off halfway through that lean is the voice of, a, like, a mermaid or a siren, right? Orcs are just, like, evil elves, right? And they were, like, made by, like, an evil god. Honestly, guys like me can't, can't leave soon enough. We gotta put a little hot sauce on the taco, you know what I mean? We want this dwarf to be the dwarfiest dwarf. Right, right, right. We right. want the elf to be the elfiest elf. And just the dashiest dash of Tabasco. <laughs> Their voices need to carry across water. I'm a creative. Um, it's a huge drain, right? Because fans can be awful. You're not in Transylvania anymore, Crystal. We don't talk vampire. When you Ouch. say white lives matter, they don't. White lives don't matter because white lives aren't a thing. I disagree. I disagree, Gary. Lutherville, Marina Del X, Otisburg. Otisburg? Who's this monster? She's got her own place. Man. Otisburg? It's a little bitty place. Otisburg? Okay, I just wipe it off. That's all. It's a little town. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! This fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. Craig! Craig Sandwich! Thank you. I enjoyed having you here. You're a very good co host. Very good co host. Very good host maybe we're not the stars <laughs> the roll call is the stars that's the reason we're doing this true yeah. story <laughs> how are y'all doing today i hope we're coming through loud and clear i'm sure if we're not you guys will let us know who was it that let us know really quick eric <laughs> i think so Sometimes you got to be careful because uh, they may hear something and they're like, oh, wait a minute, that sounded a little bit low, you know, but uh, I think they will uh, let us know. How are you guys doing today? Oh, my Lord, we've got a uh, already got 26 in here. Looks like we're headed for a uh, very good night. Yeah, that's right. The mouse is back in the yep, house. Yep, oh, yep, wait, yep. A minute. wait a minute. Hold on here. Hold on. I'll make mincemeat out of you, mouse. Hey, when I was returning punts in high school, mm -hmm. I always said you can't kill what you can't catch. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. right. No doubt about that. Speaking of someone who's uh, hard to catch. <gasps> oh, check it out. <laughs> hey, check it I was out. returning zero it. athletics in high school. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got the mustache himself. Uh, Ryan David of NerdCog, the NerdCognito podcast. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me on. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, no, no. It's going to be a we, fun night. <laughs> we were on together on Aaron's show, right? Uh, Immortal Rising. We were a week or two ago, and uh, yeah. I, I, that was the first time our streams had crossed. And now, yeah. now look, yeah. we did it again. Oops. Uh, aside, yeah, aside <laughs> from Twitter, but uh, yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> We have we are running now in the same circles, and that is uh, that's not a bad thing. I was, you know, I was listening to uh, your latest uh, Nerd Cognito podcast, and guys, if you uh, aren't, you know, don't have that on your, uh, you know, your download list, your listening get it list, there. get it. It's a it's. I, I like that you're not doing it sort of on YouTube. It's just it's just audio, and I think you said you're, that's kind of on purpose, right? It, it is, you know, uh, a lot of the folks that I consider friends are on YouTube and no offense, Double D, YouTube's pretty saturated. And back in the the budding years of my youth, uh, I had this ambition that, yeah, those youths, I had this ambition of, of someday being on the radio. And when I came to my senses and realized I didn't want to bounce around city to city every two years, I, I moved on 
But mm-hmm. now, in the twilight of my middle age, <laughs> I can realize that dream. No, I, I think it's it's important that we're in a space that's not exclusively tied to a screen so folks can listen and enjoy the hobby, driving in their car, working out in the gym, because, you know, I do that every day. And <laughs> it's just a, a different medium, and it's a medium that I'm really good at, so it's it conven- fits. It is. It's convenient, because I was just up there. I was prepping for this show, but I like I kind of had it on in the background. I'm like, oh, this is kind of convenient. I don't have to, you know, like... Have a like you said, have a screen on. I can just kind of literally. I can even get out. I can even like get minimize the browser and like do something else if yeah. I had to, you know. So it's forget. I I thought it was funny. You were. Like, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure you get along fine with your co-host, but uh, you you were talking about. Um, <laughs> oh, he's a tool bag, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You're like you're like we got to gatekeep the hobby and. Um, he, he's like, yeah, no, no, no. And you're like, well, yeah, we, we kind of do. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's funny because philosophically and politically we're, whooshed, but we've been friends for 30 years. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's weird. That can actually happen. But, um, yeah, no, Bert, Bert's exactly. a good guy. Um, he's a weird guy, but I love him anyhow. And <laughs> he's often wrong, but I love him even despite those flaws. So I got a couple friends like that myself. So, yeah, we, we <laughs> love him dearly. Yeah. And we have a lot in common. <laughs> well, well, you know, sort of. Um, I'm sure you've heard him. Um, he's he's kind of just sitting quietly, as he often does. But uh, we have Rogan here. Uh, How's it going, Ryan? That's How's it going, good. everybody? <laughs> yes, yeah, loud and proud. Uh just like your sexuality, Rogan. Loud, loud and proud. <laughs> I, and I bring it. I, I absolutely bring it. Rogan, um, Rogan was key last week while Ma- Mouse was out. Uh, uh, yes. Ro- Rogan stated his post when the trainees ran. <laughs> yeah. He did great. He did, I appreciate great. That. did great. I appreciate that. Mouse- Even though I wasn't here, I was still listening in the car. I appreciate that. The mouse has, has big shoes and they're hard to fill. Thank you. They're white. White shoes. Always. I'm always wearing white shoes. Always. All right. So we are going to get into a couple of things. Now, now, Ryan, if you have to dip out, I know you. there's a couple of things you wanted to go over. Um, so just uh, stop me. Um, I think I point. got the dispensation from the powers that be. So that's that's a good thing. Oh, good. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you, can, hang, you can hang with us then. Good. Uh, tell Mrs. David uh, we, we, we thank her. Um, <laughs> um, so we are going to do a, a little bit of news, and then uh, we are going to talk about a video I did um, <laughs> re- recently, which I thought I didn't think was that controversial or anything, but uh, apparently it got my ire up. Yeah, it got Mouse's ire up. I got a mouse dropping for you. I'm sick of it already. <laughs> What's well, Let's do a little. Uh, let's do a little bit of um, RPG news. Shall we? Okay. So, this is the first thing I wanted to uh, run by you guys. <clears throat> Wizards of the Coast hikes price on D and D months after calling the game <laughs> under monetized. <laughs> hikes the price on what? Uh, it's like books? Their, yeah, it's going to be their books going forward. I'll, uh, mm-hmm. I will, I will, elu- I will elucidate a little I, I, on the uh, top. Su- surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Wizards of the Coast announced today that they would be hiking the price of physical D and D books by twenty percent. That is a hefty. Whew, that is a hefty increase. How is that for under monetized? I think you can tell these guys. These guys are a little catty who uh, who wrote this, but uh, that's okay because we don't like Wizards of the Coast. In spite of continuous financial success, Wizards of the Coast has announced that they'll be hiking the price of print D and D books, starting with Big B Presents Glory of the Giants. The new price increase will see D and D books cost sixty dollars. Uh, plus any applicable tax, and I think before they were, uh, you know, they like. Oh, I remember. I remember giving you or maybe Gavin forty five for a hand player's handbook, but that would have probably been a little while ago. Yeah, that was a, that was. Uh, yeah, I think that that was probably the fifth edition. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's not out of the blue. Shipping and other production costs have gone up, but many in the community who are feeling that Wizards of the Coast is once again displaying the same sort of naked greed. 
that led them to release a $999 magic set. <laughs> what the hell? You know this shit's free with a five-finger discount at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here's a mouse dropping for you. Controversial <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> right no, that's, that's shit's free. That's <laughs> Grab and dash. Yep. Hey, we got to go back. I got something. Um, Eric did c- confirm that that is he is our sound check guy. But mm-hmm. Surly checked in with an Al Bundy football stories for me. And I only have one, and it actually involves Mrs. Double D. Uh-oh. Her teaching partner, Eric, mm-hmm. I picked him off two times in one game <laughs> in high school football. Yeah. So there's my Al Bundy, Al Bundy <laughs> football story. So this guy, yeah, I told I told Mrs. Double D, can you please just remind him of that every yeah. once in a while? Whenever, whenever my wife is talking about like school stuff. Yeah, crazy mouse will just say, "Oh, and by the way, uh, to tell your uh, tell your friend, I picked him off twice. Twice in one game. Twice in one game. So. <laughs> He's a good dude. Yeah, good. He's a good dude. Yeah, I read his eyes that day. I knew exactly where he was throwing <laughs> it. All right, I digress. That was the only my, was mouse drop enough for you. But back to the news. Well, D and D books will be more expensive, duh. However, now this is here. It is because yeah. uh, we we know how they are. However, D and D digital books will not increase in price. A move that seems to further solidify the Wizards of the Coast is they will they consider their upcoming VTT the future of the game. After all, that's where the costs will be the cheapest, I guess. Um, here's their community announcement. Since the release of the 2014 core rule books, we've kept the prices stable. Unfortunately, with the cost of goods and shipping continually increasing, gee, I wonder why. Um, could it be that we have a uh, administration that can't handle the inflation that caused the inflation and now can't handle it oh and by the way uh, everybody wizards of the coast voted for that so and so did most of the people that are playing D nowadays so oh well you get what you deserve we finally had to make the decision to increase the price of our new release print books we're committed to creating high quality products that deliver great value to our pl- <laughs> great value to our players and must Increase our prices to accomplish that. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's a lot more at play here. Yes, pricing has gone up, but alongside that, so have profits. Well, do they know that? Eh, maybe they do. After all, this past February, Watsi specifically was up some 13% in quarter one, 2023, compared to last year. Yeah, I don't know, man, maybe. Is that a shell and peanut game? <laughs> they, like, they, like they shot themselves solidly in the foot with the D and D, one D and D, and all this other crap. And they also pulled some shenanigans with with Magic the Gathering. You know. It, it just, yeah. No, they're, they're, they're Is Magic the Gathering the game with forty k, or is that Warhammer? Magic. Okay. Yeah. One of those card it's for card <laughs> that rogan loves so much <laughs> um snorted who who got the snort that, that was me double that was we're me. cracking them up I'm allowed to i'm allowed to <laughs> we're cracking um <laughs> i have this conspiracy theory but uh, go, i don't want to bring it we love yet. we love them. love it yes. <laughs> <laughs> i i've been preaching it for a while uh but we all know that wizards is a subsidiary of hasbro now hasbro is looking to offload Wizards of the Coast. But the problem is Wizards is too expensive to offload, right? So what do you do when you have a segment of your company that you want to shift? You drive it down so that the price reflects just that of the IP so that it's sellable. (laughs) You know, I I don't know if I can... There could be, look... We're, we're dealing with a Williams at the helm of the we D&D are, brand. <laughs> and we all know how that guy has gone historically. <laughs> they're turning their head and sealing their lips to stuff like destruction of lore, canceling artists, airbrushing their signatures out, inserting politics, uh, bullying customers with, you know, 1892 thugs, overt racism. Like, uh, did I miss one? I'm sure I did. Hadozi. Uh, I, I can keep going. <laughs> All of these things at some point, and they are impacting the physical book sales. 
you know, oh, they're making money, but they are distinctly impacting physical book sales. The last seven books have underperformed from a corporate perspective. This is evil capitalist stock trading Ryan coming out, right? Yeah. Um, their stock's in this toilet. I personally have been shorting it for about 18 months, making money <laughs> every time. Good for you. There's a reason that they, the big they them, not the little they them, has not come in and cleaned house at Wizards. And that's because they are useful idiots. Kyle is good at opening his mouth and saying something stupid to distract the rubes. Mm -hmm. The sparkle trolls are too busy defending the world, but not buying anything. And mm -hmm. Hasbro is content to see the price keep getting banged down and down and down. Now, that's my big conspiracy theory. Uh, the other theory is they're just getting ESG money. <laughs> 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 Yay! Yeah. I, yeah. I think there could be uh, there's something there to that. There could be a little. Uh, there could be a little something there. Uh, maybe it's not something that's openly planned, but maybe like, well, you know, we'll, just, we'll, let, we'll let things go, uh, like an unintended consequence. Uh, yeah, I, I want to hear more. I'm In signing up for this guy's newsletter. <laughs> I want to hear more. <laughs> um, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, I don't. Um, it, it, it's tough. I mean, they're so. They've been so incompetent lately. Boy, I don't know. It, well, here's the, here's the one thing, okay? They could make these things affordable, but they refuse to do soft covers. Everything is hardcover. Yuck. That, I'm, I'm shut up now, but yuck. <laughs> if they wanted to get something into their customers' hands that their customers, you know, could afford, they could do a soft cover. And, and you know... That would probably help a little bit. What What do you think the uh, markup is between soft and hardcover? Do you know, Ryan? I, I, sure I, I have a ballpark just from stuff that I've been, been doing with research because I have a product that's coming for quarter. So if these books are 60 hardcover, how much would they be soft cover? Let's let's take it at, at a realistic price for where it is. They they can probably produce their hardcover books for, and this is like you and I producing it, not their volume discount, but just yeah. to keep the number even, about 20 bucks, right? Uh, assuming they're printing massive quantities, let's say they bang that down to $12, $13 a title. They could put out a soft cover title around the $5 mark. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. And they don't want to. So they sell that for 20 bucks. I, I mean, I hear you, Double D. You sell that for 20 bucks, you're still making significant profit. But. Well, the thing I'm is. I'm not buying a soft cover, right? If I have a choice. Yeah. But if. I guess if everything, I, maybe it's just I don't know. The, in my generation, I had no problem with soft covers. You know, Birthright is soft covers. Yeah, the, all the, all my stuff's falling apart. I don't know. That's what tapes for. I don't know. But you know, I've I've had just I've had more than one hardcover book. Just the binding just get oh my annihilated goodness. on it, and it's like, and there's nothing you can do there other than put it in a three ring binder um, when it when it goes. You can remember, try to like do it yourself. Remember, I used to take books to the cop to the law firm and make copies for everybody <laughs> oh the good old days yeah i would do that too at my job yeah. uh, i had access to a color printer oh so nice um color printer and one of the spiral binders back in the day mouse you've been at the, yeah, you've been the guilty. machine all day what are you doing <laughs> never you mind <laughs> we're out of ink again yeah. <laughs> what um so i think here's the thing here's my here's how i view it need to take a, a dramatic drink for that <clears throat> um if everything is a hardcover special release you know then you, you're sort of diminishing what is important you know it used to be like oh this is going to be a hardcover book you know this is going to be special now it's like well everything's hardcover i mean god even i'll tell you what, we'll get it we'll get into number two here what, what i'm going to cover here again Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. All right. So we have um, here's here here are some of their releases, and the, yeah, then these are all hardcovers. Big B presents. God, they just got to throw these. They give no respect to Gary Gygax, but they just they'll, they'll throw around all of his uh, you know all the stuff that is it Big B's holding hand? Was that the spell? Yep. Glory of the Giants. 
So would that book be sixty dollars? Oh yeah, that's where it's going to start actually. When the when this gets released, yeah, August fifteenth. Yeah, this will be the first one. But oh, this got no. my yeah, this got my attention. <laughs> no. Yeah, this yeah. The, I don't know why it's not uh, Sigil in the Outlands. This is Planescape. Now, Planescape, um, you know, was a really nice box set, as we all know, back in the mid '90s. So all soft cover too. Um, Craft, here, Crafty Matt's got something for you, Double D. Oh, Crafty Matt, what's that old dog saying? <gasps> oh. He's a salty Lord. today. Holy cow. Crafty Matt, two dollars. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> the glory hole in the I was <laughs> I was gonna make that joke because I'd I had uh, seen it somewhere too, and uh, I, I purposely held off. And uh, I so I am glad that you got the uh, glory of the kill there, Crafty Matt. Yes, the glory hole of the giants. That is uh, I don't want to watch that movie. Yeah, that is a large hole. That is probably a barrel, at least a barrel sized hole, right? Throwing a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> it's gaping, that's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. There's nothing uh nothing to sneeze at there yeah um so this is going to be as you can tell here it says three hard covers in a box set well it's not a box set if you um if any of you got spell jammer which i did you know because i was reviewing it in the early days of the the channel <laughs> i, I got to do something with it because i reviewed it, it and um, i think i actually did use one monster in our campaign there was one actually pretty cool monster in there but other than that i, I didn't use one thing um yeah it's going to be just like <laughs> the um the spell jammer one they're going to cram it into a slip case that's not a box set okay a slip case is not a box set for one slip case uh, that something just holds like three bucks yeah yeah, yeah. it's gonna they'll do that they'll cram um maybe like a dm screen or something in there too it's a they bastardize everything they, they turn mm -hmm. reality into into garbage yep now is this tony d's tony d terlizzi is this his uh i bet you it's not double d we got breaking news i heard <gasps> victor gorchev our old friend grats on 2k thank you so much my friend also I have cooler covers than Wizards. He does actually. <laughs> Victor is a uh, is a gun aficionado, and uh, go get. I think basic necessities is that uh, modern necessities. Modern I necessities. Mean, modern necessities. Yeah, uh, I, I I track that down. It's a lot of fun. Um, go look for that on uh, Drive Through RPG. Uh, let us support each other. You know, I I get these super chats, and I'm trying try to like spread the wealth out am amongst. Them. Yeah, but he paid you with those goofy Dutch dollars. So. I know. Yeah, what is that like? <laughs> 10 cents or something no <laughs> I, it probably goes up it's like 20 bucks <laughs> actually i think it's a euro it's probably worth more actually it's one of the few currencies it's actually uh actually it's worth not more. worth more ice cream <laughs> double d is going to take that those two rubles or whatever it was and go put it on a horse <laughs> he's going to go put it on a horse at the track <laughs> lucky lucky lindy in the fifth uh, <laughs> so how do we feel about this um i don't know um Hey now, I, I dropped it. The hell, Rogan? Sorry, I'm a I'm a technical issue. If you, uh, I'm all good. At You're least, all good. At least these guys don't drop dice during during our session. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we we play, gang. We play on a hardwood floor, like a parquet floor. And when you drop a dice, it bounces like thirty times, and it's uh, the uh, same. It's like the same three people that drop them every time. If I didn't know any better, it's like at school when everybody was like, hey, one o'clock pencil drop. Yep, that's <laughs> like exactly it. 10 o'clock dice drop. I don't know if you guys remember this. I, yeah, I'm a little old, but uh, <laughs> the dime store in my neighborhood when I was growing up had these things called a clacker. This mm -hmm. acrylic balls and you yeah. did this and they clacked. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what it sounds like when I hit the dice at your clink, floor. Clink. Clack, 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 clack. Two two dollars fifty. I knew, yeah, I knew Victor. It was a little bit. You you put a little hot sauce on yeah, that uh, on that taco on that uh, super chat. I like it. Thank you, my friend. It's funny you mentioned that little clacker. You know, that he's talking about the balls. You know, on the end yeah. of the wooden paddle. And um, I was actually watching the original House of Wax this week. I'm trying to catch up on all the old Vincent Price movies that either I had never seen or I hadn't seen in a long, long time. And I had forgotten that the original House of Wax was a 3D movie. 
Oh. And uh, it's so cheesy because <laughs> out in front of the house of wax is this uh, carnival barker, essentially like come into the house of wax. And he has like two of those going at the same time. And I'm like, why is he doing this? And he's like right into the camera. He's like, how about you there in the front row with the popcorn and like doing, 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 doing. I'm like, oh, that's that's for the 1953 uh, 3D effect. <laughs> I remember seeing it on a Sven Gulli episode one night and they ran the 3D version on regular TV just because it's Sven Gulli. Yeah. And I, that's the one that I distinctly remember from yeah. that scene. But no, that, that sound, man, it brings me back mm -hmm. uh, in my tween early playing years. I had a friend whose house was a contemporary built in the early 70s, and they had a conversation nook with the hardwood inlay, and we would play oh, yeah, in yeah. that little in that little area. And that sound, it's yeah. unmistakable, dropping dice on wood. It is. Thank you. Oh, yes. yes. I try not. I try, I try to just let it go. I'm, I got to be like a teacher. Just like. But then it's like a two minute thing, like, well, who's going to pick it up? Somebody's got to go under the table and pick yeah, it up. Where is it? Oh, I see it. I'll get it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I'm not going to pick up the guy's stuff. I'm I think not. Double D edits that out from the live play. Yeah. The I, I do. I, I got to edit more out. I just, I threw the last one up. It's almost four hours. You, and I'm you like, you edit your videos? <laughs> what is <laughs> editing? What's that? Editing? What's that? Um, a lot yeah. of the, the double D, the chat's blowing up today about um, Tina Turner. Yeah, the yeah. Way. Um, she was anti in the um, Mel Thunderdome. Movies. Thunderdome. Yep. So, yeah, that's uh, I mean, she's looked 83. That's a good uh, that's a good uh, life. She's she survived Ike Turner. God bless her. <laughs> learn how to take a punch. Learn, I was going to say learn how to duck, learn how to duck, learn how to take a punch. <laughs> Yeah, no, she was. Um, I, I like Tina. I, I, I like some of her music too. Like, what's mm -hmm. love got to do with it? I don't know. It's a classic song. We don't need I, another. We don't need another hero. We don't need another hero from from, from Thunderdome. Uh, Thunderdome. Yeah, I mean, did, uh, did she ever? Her legs claw were insured. Back her Someone citizenship. Said, Pardon me. Did she just? Did she ever claw back her citizenship? Because she she relinquished it. So, uh, you know, some I'm not sure. Ago. I don't know. That's something. If Gap, Gavin, if you're out there listening. <laughs> Will you yeah. send us that message right yeah. away, please? Yeah, he may. Uh... Side note, Gavin never listens. <laughs> <laughs> Only when he's on. <laughs> um, her legs, um, someone made a comment about her legs, and I am I think that they were insured with the Lloyds of London. I remember hearing something about that yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. You, uh, Yeah, you hear that about a lot of things, but you wonder if it's true. Because I heard Lloyd stop doing that kind of stuff a lot. Well, this would have been. Yeah, it's true. It would have been 30 ago, years right? ago, but. But even like, yeah, you're like, didn't she have a, didn't that. she have a endorsement with member legs came in yes. like an egg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I uh, she had a, yeah. Yes. She had a, a sponsorship. Very with good that. memory. Yeah. Yeah. She had great, great legs. Yeah. Yeah. She was good looking. Well, in a good memory. Is that what you said? You have a great, you have a great. Oh, memory. I did. Yes, <laughs> yes, Rogan, did. Thank you. No, you did. I thought you were talking about her. Like, yeah, she never <laughs> forgot her lines. I didn't. <laughs> All right. So. I don't know if she has great legs, but uh, there's uh, something else I, I wanted to talk about in the news. Um, and we'll get to uh, Ryan Dancy in a moment. Uh, but, oh, uh, boy. Bad. But it's, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's our friend Ginny. Um, Wait, where's her goofy hair? I think she's cosplaying there. But she just, this was actually today. Flying, it's, she's quoting a movie. It's an anime movie. Uh, flying used to be fun until I started doing it for a living. Kiki's Delivery Service. Why is this movie so relatable? So I'm like, huh. I'm like, what what, what could be going on here? What is... Uh, so I started... Um, I started looking, and I, I think I know what she's... I think I know what she's uh, struggling with. So th this is her latest video. Oh. Um. All right, so we'll, we'll go, just go like the first two minutes. I think you'll get into it. All right, so you think like, oh, man, this is going to be a, a Ginny video about epic boss battles. We got to find out what Ginny thinks of epic boss battles, right, Rogan? Absolutely. Oh, I hold, right. oh, oh I'm, right. I'm holding my breath. I'm holding my breath. All right, hold it. <sighs> two minutes, go. When you're running a D&D game, you're not likely to be using monsters that have boss-like features like lair actions, legendary actions, and environmental effects until your players are upwards of level 10. But anybody who's worked a crappy corporate job knows that even at very low levels, there's always a boss. Slug, 
Can you send in mud guts? I thought I told him I needed those purging reports on my desk by 2 p.m. Right away, Goblin Boss. He's already been written up for this. I guess it's time to escalate. Your players shouldn't have wait. to wait until higher levels wait. to have epic. What the heck was that? <laughs> That's what we call an insert, a skit, as as, the, as they used to say. Yeah, she goes for it. I... Hey, I'm not going to shit on her production, right? No, no, no. You can't. You can't. She commits. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. But is this a commitment with a cost? Let us continue. Boss battles and lairs are one of the ways you can make a boss fight exciting. For those who aren't familiar with lairs, lair actions basically make the environment into its own monster with its own initiative to back up the big bad. For example, an ancient red dragon can use lair actions like a geyser of magma or poisonous volcanic gas. Not only do lair actions lend atmosphere and unpredictability to an encounter, but on a more practical level, they help balance out action economy so that your boss can actually pose a threat. Regional effects do something similar, but they're constant. So instead of something happening regularly during an so she's starting to go off the rails here into like technical jargon. So this isn't this wouldn't be what's considered like entertaining. So I, I was like watching. I'm like, all right, what what is going on here? Because she's getting a little bit says, into she is cute as a she button. is attractive. She's yeah, I mean her only fans button. must be huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just want to know what's uh, what it's under. You know, I, just, I keep looking and I can't, can't find be under Ginny D. She's got to have a uh, slutty uh, oh, Ginny alternative. The D. Let me tell you. Ginny, yeah, Ginny G. <laughs> Initiative. A regional effect is more like how all low intelligence creatures within six miles of a Kraken's lair fight to defend the Kraken. Unfortunately, the monster manual doesn't really give you access to lairs when your party is at lower levels. A goblin boss doesn't have a lair, for example. But the good news is we don't have to rely on this thing. I'm going to teach you the basics of how to create and use these kinds of features to make your boss battles epic. And for hands-on examples, we're going to reference Home Field Advantage, hmm. a compendium of lair actions and regional effects for over 300 monsters from official D&D source books. That's because this video is sponsored by DM's Guild. DM's Guild is a So, I'm I'm sitting there thinking she makes that tweet and I'm like, what what could be going on here? I look at the latest Ginny video. And then I'm like, oh, she's start she's starting to realize that uh being a YouTuber is a business. Like if she wants to earn <laughs> that that sweet YouTube money, She's got to shill and like do these like paid advertisements. Because if you remember, she did the one with Cobalt Press. Yes. Uh, Tales of the Valiant. That was the one in her bedroom. Yes. With, yeah. Uh, the, the elf, uh, you know, she was talking to herself yeah. as, as an elf. Jenny. So I think she's starting to lament like, oh, God, this is hard work. I got to actually, you know, <laughs> I get half a million subscribers, you know, and I probably get like, you know, five grand, you know, 10 grand a month or whatever she's pulling in. Only fans place pays much better. Why can't you just mention Coca Cola in one of her videos and get some real sponsorship? Coca by the way, Coca Cola. Let's see if they start kicking in with some. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna happen. Hey, you know, you gotta find something to pay the bills and offset that she discovered a strategy from nineteen ninety one. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Well something's gotta something's gotta compensate. And, and, and if uh, you recall, yeah, she she also said that she was burnt out, remember? Oh, she just couldn't do it anymore. After what was it, two years of DMing? It was yeah. it was just so stressful. I had to take a time out. <laughs> I was laughing so hard there. I'm like, oh man, two years, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Geez, I'm I'm like, uh, I guess I'm 28 years uh, overdue for my uh, for my next break. Uh, my break, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there must be something wrong with you, Double D. Breaks and lunches are canceled. Everybody, back to work. Well, how about the fact that uh, maybe we're not tourists here? Maybe that we just kind of like doing it and, you know, we'll do it. And uh, as far as the YouTube thing, yeah, there is a cost. I mean, if you're going to be successful, you got to understand. So either you you play into it or you just say like, well, I'm going to I'm going to lose a few subscribers because I'm not going to do this high pressure stuff like this selling. I'm going to do what I want to do. Sorry, but you have control over your life, Jenny. The problem is you got addicted to the online money. Maybe that break hurt her in the wallet, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. 42 years, Eric C. Yep. I think total I'm at 40, 
let's see, I started at 81, right? So yeah, I'd be coming up on 42 as well. Brian, I apologize in advance. Every time I click on something to read, it covers you. <laughs> That's all right. The, my, my whole gag to get on here was no one wants to see this face. That's why that was my, my shtick. When, whenever someone asked, why aren't you guys on YouTube? Why aren't you got no one wants to see this face. So he's got a face for radio. Our, uh, our friend, uh, pundit is here. RPG. We pundit need, can we do a quick roll call? Hold on one second. Uh, Thank you very much. And I also want to say that uh, in a couple of weeks, um, I will have the one and only RPG Pundit, uh, hopefully on the show. Uh, we are working on it, uh, but I think we've settled on a date in uh, early June. I think it's that maybe that second week of June. I'll have to check. Uh, I'll let you is guys know. Is mouse dropping right there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Week, 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 week. So, yeah. So, thank you so much, Kaz. Yes, 2,000 subscribers. Okay, um, it is awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, let's, uh, I guess uh, we can. I'll reminisce a little bit here. Get a little uh, misty-eyed. Um, <laughs> I, I should wait until I'm like at 2010 because I think I said, woohoo, I'm at 2000. And then I think I went immediately went like, I was at 2001, 2000. Yeah, I was up at 2001 and I said, oh, thanks. You know, everybody 2000. And then I think two people unsubscribed, which I think some people do just on purpose. <laughs> You're so, back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually, yeah. I mean, you just... T time uh time will uh is your friend there because you'll you're, you're i'm always getting a you know at least four or five a day or whatever that's, that's awesome so, but yeah 2000 so um yeah it's a uh, great honor i don't take anything for granted i mean as i've said before when i was first starting out you know crazy mouse saw this i was like holy shit i got you know four subscribers today oh my god yeah i went from like 20 to 24 <laughs> big <laughs> news big news i'm like oh my god this is so cool Hey, but isn't that feeling great when you do that? I remember yeah. when we started too. I was like, I can't believe 12 people this week wanted to hear what I had to say. That's yes. the part. Yes. Thank you, Ryan. I think that that is phenomenal. And not only that, but like I always sit and think about where the people in the world are listening in from. <laughs> I find that so fascinating. Yeah, he is, he is I was really just fast. looking at our stats today for that. I was like, wow, I've got someone in Indonesia that's regularly, you know, there's uh, there's a handful mm -hmm. of people in this country that I've never heard of that are listening. And it's 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 mind blowing and humbling. Right. It is, I think it's fascinating. And I'm I'm super pr like, I don't want to be patronizing, but I'm super proud of Double D. Like, oh, absolutely. he just started this up one day in his car if anybody watches like the first two <laughs> first episode like in his car mrs double d's probably screaming at him to come inside to get the garbage or something <laughs> no if you recall i was looking for a quiet place to film that i know because everyone's dropping dice yeah. in your basement that's why yeah, that's I right. you gotta right. go outside to get some shit done then i finally found a good spot and i'm like all right this is perfect and then some old fat neighbor lady's like George, did you bring the dog in? I'm like, oh, oh man, my God. <laughs> these guys are going to be yelling. These guys are going at it all day. So Garibay, Garibay doesn't edit that out. That's in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if George would have worked it out, he'd, he would have been your sidekick. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone just typed in. Oh, uh, hop in the car, George. <laughs> <laughs> Meat just said it perfectly. Uh, Garibay uses his car. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> Bleaker says Garibay lives in his car. <laughs> I believe all that. I believe he edits in his car. <laughs> Not to throw this off the rails, but doesn't it drive you nuts when you see like the car selfie or the car YouTube or the car TikTok? Come on, people. And, and it's like big people that are doing this. And I'm like, oh. it's it's OK for a uh, a change of pace. And like I said, I was just doing it to kind of experiment almost also, too, as a throwback um, to the old diversity in comics, Zach videos, you know, where he would do that. Um, Cause that, you know, that's where I kind of stole my name from, but yeah, I, I quickly sussed out like, okay, that was a good gimmick, but I need, I need a space now to, uh, to film this stuff. I, I can't, I can't be driving around town and like having car horns. Honking. Could you imagine the three of us <laughs> driving around in double D's car doing this show live? Um, we, <laughs> well, we got to try that. We, we can make that happen. We're, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually we, we found out uh, we're, we're not too far away from Ryan. We, we didn't have to rent a van. We, we could meet up somewhere and uh, yeah, we could, we could uh, do a, uh, a smoky and the bandit. We can do a north south on that highway. You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. and, and we can just do like a three hour stream up and down. <laughs> Freaking, that'd be we'll, so be, we'll, meet, we'll meet at a certain outlet mall, maybe in the but, middle. And that's uh... <laughs> that sounds like a plan to me. We have great soft pretzels. Oh, yeah. They got rid of the candy store there, though. 
They got what? That candy store. Remember the one that you used to like? At that oh, mall? yeah. Victor, I agree. Oh, gone, yeah. Victor, I agree a little bit. Ginny D does a look, have a little Arya Stark in her. Definitely, yeah. Her eyes are a little... Uh, they got that start. Look, her eyes are, it's, to a lot of people, mesmerizing. It's I those mean. eyebrows. Uh, yeah, and her hair, too. Like she, I can tell she's trying to uh, get out of the um, the colored hair business, as they say. So she's like, she's doing it step by step. She's yeah. like, oh, I'll keep a little bit of it, but I'm going dark. I right. Mean, she's just, she's, I think she's at a point like I'm sick of like color. Her um, hair. shirt makes her look like Lily from, was it Verizon? What is Lily from um the phone company? AT&T. Oh, AT&T. Yeah. My love, you blood, or whatever. The girl who made a shitload of money showing her tits and now is buttoned up like a fucking nun. I don't know. <laughs> Oops. That's that's the one we're talking about. I don't way. think that she wanted to. Or no, 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 no. Oh, no I stand it corrected. Oh, no, She's she the was. one that did want to. Someone said that she sexualizing phones or something like that. She no, showed she, her. She boobs. leaned in heavily, like, "Oh my god, I was victimized afterward." Like, "Oh my god, people were saying like how pretty I was." So now she has total control over her shit. So she dresses herself like her top buttons buttoned, like um. Little House on a Prairie. Style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, she looks like yeah, one of the Angles girls. She really um, showed her boobs. Hmm? Did she really? Did I'm she stuck ever? on that? Uh, did she? No, I don't. Think I don't I think she ever did. Like, I don't think she was ever in a movie. That you're she... always out there. I mean, yeah. I mean, she showed cleavage. I mean, go just go look at those. Uh, She's a very pretty lady. She can. You can look at her on red carpets in those dresses. Yeah, yeah. She she made her bones by doing that, and then I just I hate it when they. When they think it's their sparkling personality, it's like, all right, you were a little cute and you had big tits. Kobenizer says, Elvira, how I miss thee. If anybody remembers that. Yeah, well, she, and she used her tools properly. Cassandra, yeah. Although, although she is a lesbian, uh, she said all those years she's. Uh, Elvira. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And she's like, I was, uh, she's like, I was, I've always been in a relationship with a woman. So she hit, hit it well. Did we, did, can you guys see here? I don't know if you can see this. Who's, who's commenting on her video, but it's our old friend Bob. <laughs> All right. Bob the Builder. Wow. Bob the World Builder. Yeah. What a great topic! Exclamation point. Also, that goblin cosplay is incredible. All right. So she's just, he's just kind of puffing her up here. It's not a topic, Bob. It's a commercial. <laughs> she, she got money for this, uh, so let's uh, let's not go uh, let's not go crazy. Um, although I thought it was funny, I, I did, and I'm not going to show it, but I did watch a uh, uh, the most recent Bob video, and he was talking about the um, critical role folks, and uh, it's kind of something we already covered. You know, the Candela Obscura. You know, apply gently over affected area. So, in other words, he went and watched one of our videos and then decided uh, to do a little topic on his own. Well, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And I mean, he's he was coming to the same conclusions. I'm like, oh, Bob, come on. I mean, these are, you could draw these conclusions. A, a four year old could draw these conclusions. What's I mean, next? Is he going to talk about that guy from Stand By Me? What's his name? Oh, will, will we? Yeah. He's going to do one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah I guess, but if Bob does that, I'm going to. I'm going to tip my hand to him and say, Bob. hold on. We got a couple breaking news. We got some mouse droppings coming in. Oh my God. Air raid. Victor Gordon. Jeez. Oh, some more rubles are coming in your way. Giving me now four dollars and 30 cents. <laughs> it's like it's like the the jerk. What are you, yes. what are you saying? Those those uh, ten dollars. And all right. Uh, she should commit to the <laughs> to the goblin cosplay as <gasps> Gobby Double D. <laughs> I like it, Victor. We got um, another. We got you, another one too, you, buddy. You are free to uh, convince her of that. Uh, yes, go go on Twitter and see. Bring my name up and see. What you go think. on Twitter and get blocked by Ginny T. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so she hasn't blocked me yet. Uh, you know, I think role. I think uh, he'll he'll be joining a pretty large club because uh, Ginny D was one of the folks that went through when. Oh my gosh, this was like two years ago certain wings of the hobby that might be sparkle trolls are using block lists and lo and behold boom my account <laughs> hit it i never interacted never commented never did anything so um yeah, yeah go, go ahead vic join join up with us it's a good group to be in <laughs> exactly p leaf uh, for uh he's also two euros oh my god we're getting a uh a premium on these there's nothing Across the it's like a bond premium yeah, this is, this is not Look, a. Look, I brought you man. forty-five cents tonight. That's right. You, you euros are 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 it. Thank you so much, Peely. 
DCC Dungeon Crawl Classics is better. Still need more players. Uh, yeah, um, I'd love to do DCC, even if it's just a um, yeah, just a, a one-off or something. I'm I'm dying to try that funnel. I think these guys would have a a hell of a time running a bunch of farmers and you know whatever through <laughs> through a killer dungeon where they're just getting ripped apart and then maybe a couple of them can survive i think that would be so fun i didn't know when you dropped it at the beginning of the show that you guys had never done it have you you've never done dcc oh my goodness it i i I threw it out there as a choice you know when we were going to switch from 5e i'm like guys there's i think there's two solid choices castles and crusades dcc what do you think and you know they like i said they went with even uh, if you you commit for like four sessions to dcc it's such a unique experience. You guys have to we, do it. We will do that. Go. Yeah, we, we will do it. Uh, even if uh, somebody else can can run it, and I'll, I'll actually uh, enjoy playing in it or something. I, I'd like to see you on our side. Yeah, of the table. yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm due, I know I'm due for a break here soon. I, I just... Uh, Pew Pew wants to run something, doesn't he? Everybody wants to run something. That's, that's the, the thing is, it's like I'd be out of the chair for like a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to be out of the chair for like a year. Uh, like... I'd like to maybe take more regular breaks, but not like extended, like I eight, eight month breaks. Right. You know, you know what I mean? I do. So maybe we can yeah, work this schedule and all that. P leaf. Oh my God. He's, he's hitting us again. So let's see two. I, I got to try to figure this out now. So it's two fifty. It's 15 cents for $2, 37, like $35, 37 cents. My Lord. Thank you so much. Okay. P leaf says, Important question. Why are all the flogging? Why are they all flogging to Pathfinder 2E? I think why is everybody going over there? I still hope to make more people play DCC. Want to make a Westmarch style uh, game for it. Yeah, I think there's, I know you're not the only one. I think there are people out there who have uh, done that. And why are they all going to Pathfinder 2E? Well, I mean, it's the, Pepsi to, you know, Wizards of the Coast's Coke. It's just so known out there. Um, I think it's just safe. You know, and they know it's it's still uh, essentially uh, D&D. And he follows that up. My Lord, we are... My friend, you don't you do not have to keep doing this. Thank you so much. This is, this is a generous man. Next one's free. Just tell me what you're going right. to say. That's right, yes. <laughs> Funnel is yeah they did the funnel like God that funnel looks hella fun, God dang, but people should try DC level play. Yep, oh, yeah you sold us. Yep. All right. Well, he's got one literally. more literally. Yep, and he's got one more for you, Victor. Back to Victor now. These guys are like it's like an auction. It is. They're like auction. <laughs> Victor, get yourself a half a gallon of gas, Yank. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, uh, actually, uh, we just got a new whip at the uh, household. I uh, went to uh, Carvana uh, over in Ohio, and I uh, got to put a uh, coin. Oh, you did the what vending is, machine. I did the vending machine, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yep, I was going to live stream it, but uh, it just it, it wasn't going to work out. There's Carvana is in a little bit of financial trouble. So I think they were a little understaffed. Like, there was one woman, and there was, like, four customers, like, waiting, so... <laughs> Just, just gonna get my ride and get the fuck out of here. So, um, <laughs> Give me my whip. I did, yeah. So it was. Eh, as far as the vending machine, it's uh, a little overrated, but uh, nice. You know, it's nice. Double D screaming ludicrous on the ride home. I do a hundred on the highway, so if you do the speed limit, get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Kaz, uh, RPG Money. Everyone should check out Lion and Dragon. Yes, you should. The diametric opposite of D- uh, DCC, but that's. The other side of what's needed, absolutely. So I did um, kind of more in the earlier days of uh, my channel. I did a review of Lion and Dragon, and I really did like it. Uh, it, it would be a like perfect for like a very low level D and D style. Or I th- one of the things I posited, and I think uh, Pundit kind of uh, confirmed this, that um, Lion and Dragon would be perfect for running like Pendragon. Uh, you can easily convert the uh, traits and passions and all that stuff over to lion and dragon uh which pendragon i hate to say it kind of has a clunky combat system um it's 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 kind of similar enough to kind of D, but it's it's just i don't know it's just kind of weird go yeah it's not, not quite that but there's just some odd things about it 
Um, I don't know, maybe some people like it. I've always been just kind of like lukewarm to it. Like, oh, okay. It's mainly like the, the passions and the traits that do Pendragon, you know, justice. And of course, you know, the source material. So uh, yeah, if you're tr trying Pendragon, you can kind of marry the two um, and use Lion and Dragon for, you know, the Pendragon, at least for combat. Um, be very easy to do. Or like I said, a low level D&D &D, uh, campaign. I don't know if this is a real question or not. Perfect Tangent has a um, something about did anyone um, kickstart Giant Lands? I did. Yeah, I, I have Giant Lands. I, I got to admit, I didn't. Uh, I haven't looked at it very much. It came and I was just like, oh, cool. You know, I kind of opened it up, flipped through it, and um, I haven't really looked at it. So maybe someday uh, I will. You know, that was back when, you know, they were kind of getting you know <laughs> that whole thing like everybody was kind of on their side and like oh yeah let's let's support them and then that uh, kind of kind of went a little crazy there for a little bit so I don't know. a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well trying to trying to be nice uh you know i don't, I, don't I, I like to focus on the positive ryan so yeah so yeah um yeah any, so yeah check out dcc but also check out uh lion and dragon our friend pundit he's got a bunch of stuff um invisible college stuff you know all that uh ryan i have a question for you have you ever been to gen con then i have i have yeah. been to gen con um I, I what was the anime one in baltimore i used to do that one regularly too um and origins um full disclosure i i have yeah. a uh ownership stake in a flgs so we get to expense that stuff <laughs> oh nice nice yeah um, um, but no, you know, yeah. I, and now I've not been since, you know, I had the Taliban up to, to go to them. So it's been a few years and I won't go back because of the political bent that's in these conventions now yeah. that is just mind boggling. Right. It's um, such a shame, too. Yeah. I mean, we, it, it's we're, we're sort of wrestling with that. It's like we 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 almost just want to like for at least for once just kind of put our fingers in our ears and just be like we're gonna have a good time despite it but yeah you are sort of <laughs> sort of enriching these these dummies you but are it, there's still it, mass mandates coming into play 2023 for some of these cons there was a one last last week that just just out of the blue said oh yeah we're gonna enforce the mask mandate at least for the next two convention years <laughs> really oh my God. Uh, come I on mean, guys it, it, you, you, you should, have you to should drop be able to it stay. at some point you should right. be able to say, hey, look, at least, I mean, just look at Gen Con dropped it. So if Gen Con is dropping it, like, how, how the hell are you still keeping it for the next two years? Holy I, shit. I don't know, though. I don't know that I can hold my nose and support it knowing yeah. how much of that dollar and how much of the income that's getting donated in for the convention to start comes from other sources, right? We're, we're yeah. talking games, though. We're not talking politics. It's yeah. just... It's disheartening for me, right? Yeah, we we may try Origins actually, and I know they're not. Mrs. Double D's better. brought that up a couple times. Yeah, Origins. Origins is good for board gamers, and Mrs. D is an avid board gamer. Um, oh, so well, she's, she's like got to a... come my way then. I, oh, you can't see. I have the camera repositioned. I'm, I'm surrounded by about 500 of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of um, I'm I'm kind of a little sad, honestly. Uh, you know, every Memorial Day, uh, I have a gigantic twilight imperium game um i i have a i have a huge i have made every planet 3d like literally <laughs> wow. like a styrofoam ball oh. like i have like ship stands that like are magnetic i this game i have gone all out for spared um, no expense oh no i i order a trophy every year um for the winner <laughs> i have uh, and i have like a customized like ready to go like whoever's gonna win with their faction name like to put on the trophy and like the even anybody who plays gets like a this nice like square pin i, I have a spectacular veni vidi lucy i came i saw i played and that that's not happening this year it's not um i asked you know my my son is like big into it too you know he's kind of he kind of i kind of said like a couple weeks back i'm like so we're, you know, Twilight Imperium. He just shook his head. They're in the middle of buying a house. And I think it's just too, too like stressful and all that. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right. So I understand. But, and he uh, brings three people that him, 
he does yeah he's he's got a he's got his group so i'm like well and i think honestly a couple of them would come regardless right I mean, they, they love playing so much it, it really is a, a once a year like event and uh damn have you ever played uh twilight imperium ryan yeah uh, in fact we're we always uh, there's one guy in the group that loves it and he's clamoring to to get it out but it's just we don't have the the weekend <laughs> to invest yeah. in it right and i say yeah. that with some exaggeration but it's still it's still such a run and i'm not opposed to three four five hour run but when you get into the double digits which ti yeah. can and usually does it's it's yeah. you have to have, have the commitment it's odd. I mean, we went up to eight players. I was doing an eight player game before they had the official expansion for it. I'm like, oh, wow. I can do this easy. Um, so, and a couple of those games went up to 12 hours. And then um, I was expecting the worst over the last two years. And honestly, they were done eight hours. And I'm like, wow, eight, eight player game done in eight hours. And mm -hmm. uh, just the way it went. Uh, Eric C, super chat, $5. Thank you so much, Eric C. You are always here and uh, always appreciated, my friend. I love Twilight Imperium. But my board game group never wants to play it. Um, <laughs> you, you should, you should just tell them like, look, I know it's a commitment, and you know, you really, it really is a commitment. You have to tell them like, do do not make plans. Don't say I'll 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 meet up with my you know wife girlfriend later. You will literally be there all day, but you will have an experience that is so fascinating if it's done right. With Torah respectfully disagrees with you, Double D. Ti is the most overrated boy. That's okay, Torah. You are allowed to have that opinion. Um, I think a lot. It's a lot of it depends on you know if, if somebody had you know maybe a, a less than good experience. Rogan, have you played people. Twilight Imperium? Yes, yeah, he's yeah, absolutely. Been there a couple yeah. times. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Has anybody yeah, ever first... gotten so mad at the table that they wanted to just kill somebody? Would that be Gavin? <laughs> Gavin is guy. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin is, has, has threatened annihilation. Yes, to my quote. Do you like, really want him to win? Yes. It's, yeah, our friend Gavin. He gets so worked up. Do you really want him to win? <laughs> he's like, he knew he was out of one game, and he's he points to my son, and he's like. It is now my affirmed goal to make sure you do not win. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I will do whatever it takes to make sure you don't win. Because my son, and my son is a bit of a dick when he plays. He will dick over. He has invaded my uh, home planet game, right? so many. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, I I looked at him last time. I'm like, don't do it. I said, I, I will make sure you don't win this game if you, if you do it. I, I said, I will. I always play the Yin Brotherhood, you know, and I have this ship that'll blow up anything in the system. I'm like, I will, I will kamikaze you. <laughs> the last time he listened to me, but before that, he's like, "Sorry, Dad, got to do it." You know, it's called, good like, for like him. The nuances <laughs> the TI really does is it brings that secondary game in because you're going to have a first of all, you want to play it with a big group, right? And yes. of course, that's going to increase your time, but it's just the nature of it. You're it's yeah. it's four X on a table. You have to play it with a big group. Yeah. But the fact that I know I'm not winning, but I can manipulate the rest of the yeah. game and still be involved and, and vested in the table yeah. for, for hours is one of the beautiful things yeah. well, well, that I love about that they, game. They but designed again, it that way. We never play it because of time, right? Yeah, we we, I we might get that. it out once yeah. a year. Yeah, I, I, I completely understand that. Maybe you should do it uh, like 4th of July-ish then. <laughs> it gives... You know, yeah, but you get other people with families, and they're like, "I'm not playing that on Fourth of July." And so, yeah, families, and then kids, and then it's uh, why there are twelve nerds in the basement. You know, come <laughs> up here, thinking up the joint. Sweat downstairs. Oh, it, it, it there are days, there are days, and we've had to have the talk with with some folks that have cycled in and out of the group over the years. I think everybody experiences that um yeah. unfortunately right it's it's the stigma with our, it hasn't uh ha come up with our normal group but on twilight imperium day i i literally bought a, a deodorant i said guys I, I i will send out an email before i'll say guys make sure you are showered and deodorized before the game i said if you need i said i will have deodorant there if you need to do a quick hit i said be respectful so right. i don't think we've ever had a, a real problem with that that's great problem. that's great um yeah, Kaz says uh, he predicted Giant Lands would suck. I haven't gone through it enough to know that it would. Uh, I thought it was like, oh, it's going to be like, um, you know, like Thundar or something like that. I don't know. It just the, the problem with a lot of these like boutique games is they're just there's not a lot of support for them. If they're so different, you can't like use other things for them, you know, like 
thing with like like Lion and Dragon or something, you know, DCC is you can kind of shoehorn some older stuff into it, you know, like OSR stuff, uh, even third edition stuff with uh, Lion and Dragon. I'd love to get to play Ironcaster. Well, um, I will I will keep you in mind if uh, Ironcaster, you can make this drive. Come on. <laughs> uh, Brian James has something uh, for you, Double D. It's a good call on having deodorant on hand before the game. Yeah, honestly, I I always like it because it gives if somebody is suspecting that they stink, but maybe they don't, they're unsure or whatever. It just gives them a, like a, an out. Like if you're just saying like generally like, hey, guys, you know, we're all going to be a, we're all in the same room. I'll have the dehumidifier going, but it's going to it's going to get a little hot and heavy. Just hit the deodorant whenever you need to. You know, and hopefully they get the idea. People are trying to sneak in a smell fee too. They are lift up their arm and give it a yeah. quick one. Um, yeah, I, I've been guilty of that too. Hey, just take the pause, man. All right, everybody, you know, go do your business, get a drink, and hit yourself up with the spray. Then, then everybody's in the same boat. Um, we had a big group like that. Um, we had at one point a core board gaming group that was 10 and we would actually break into two of five and five or six and four or something like that. Um, we actually, I just all threw in and got a very small conference room in one of the hotels. It made life so much easier, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like a little office conference room. It seats 20. They bring you water and soda and you just go all day. Like a mini convention hall, yeah. you know, room. Yeah. What do you got? You were going to well, say something? Back, right? back in the day, I, I worked at a comic book store many years ago, and uh, we, they got into gaming, and they had several mini cons at the hotel downtown. And I was at one of those, yeah. Yeah. The, I bet you we we rubbed shoulders and didn't even realize it because yeah. uh, we hadn't met yet. <laughs> but the the, 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 you know, the first one, we had, we had rented out a handful of rooms. We had one room specifically for vendors. We had uh, you know some local people selling comics from various little towns not too far away. But uh, the big uh, one of the big gaming rooms was the uh, the 40K room. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is back when spandex was really popular for every guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember that? You know, and, and uh, it, you, know, this, you know, the never ending flow of pizza boxes and people walking around. Um, everybody had to take their shoes off in a certain area because we had a big epic, this huge battle with the with the, the large the, you know, Titans and stuff like that. And uh, this room. Freaked. Oh God, yeah. I could imagine. I could smell it from here. Somebody running down the drugstore and getting some sort of spray. My <laughs> uh, my daughter was real little at the time, and she, my wife, brought my daughter to say hi, and she just came in the room. And she's like, "Oh my God, Dad, it stinks in here." <laughs> it was just seven, six or seven. And it was just ah. Really Daddy, awesome. Daddy, what are you doing here? Don't do this. <laughs> I don't love Daddy anymore. Oh, it was just. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, like like. like you know, like Double D said, like, hey, uh, you, do you really do you? He puts it out there, you know, and but we all we're all sensible. Like back in the day, like, I don't know, just just hygiene just wasn't the thing back in the early, early yeah. 90s. Exactly. <laughs> Vic, Victor, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, for sending some of your viewers my way. I appreciate it, amigo. And yeah. all the super chats, too. Um, check out uh, Victor's channel, but also check out, uh, more importantly, his stuff. Uh, he does a lot of modern stuff. Uh, that you can easily fit in. Um, I think it's. I think you could uh, work with that. Do a little bit of modern fun. We do a little uh, John Wicky style stuff. I don't know. Um, modern uh, modern necessities, right? Yep. Very cool game. Uh, I got the PDF of it last week, and uh, I was kind of flipping through it at lunch uh, one day this week. So uh, yeah, check it out. Very guys. Very affordable. Good lord. I think it was like $8 for the PDF. Skip lunch and walk for a day. You'll lose a couple pounds, and uh, you'll support someone. Uh, I'm fix a madman, but I love him. He cranks out so much material, and it's yeah. all quality. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I can't speak highly enough. Proud, proud to call him my friend, and guys got to support him because uh, his stuff is just top-notch, and he puts – so yeah. much time and effort into it compared to some of the swill that comes out for yeah. 60 bucks not naming yep. names wizards nazis yeah, exactly yeah, so guys just, see. just try to <laughs> pick, you know if you got to pick and choose your spots fine but like good there are so many good choices over on this side like i said we got rpg pundit coming into the chat now he's got a lot of stuff for sale and you know you're 
you're dealing with uh, stuff that's very well written from uh, a very smart man. So, so, uh, so, so if you you can um, you can sink your teeth into a lot of that, and even if you're not, even if you don't use Lion and Dragon, it's it's worth it for like the alchemy portion. Honestly, it's like so well researched. It's. I'm glad you said that. I was going to say al- alchemy is like the the one thing that you could plop in anywhere, and yes. no one can touch it. Yeah, for We're sure. We're on the same page, Double D. I know. It's like we got this psychic thing going up that going up that that interstate. That it's interstate. Yeah. All right, so let's get to uh, let's get to this. All right. Oh, I remember him. Yeah, do you? Who? So uh, Ryan Dancy. <laughs> Yesterday, I engaged in a discussion about the lack of representation of women as designers in the gaming community. It was not my finest moment. I'm embarrassed and mad at myself for the tone and content of my contribution to that discussion. It doesn't reflect my views, and it certainly doesn't reflect the views of the company I work for, which means he got some pushback from, uh, what, AEG, I think he's at, Aldrich. Um, I'm sorry for any harm I've caused and any offense I've given. God, what a putz um yeah it's good. No, not yet <laughs> this topic is extremely important to me and i want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem i've discussed both my poor original um yes to the aeg double d yeah thank you yeah i've discussed my poor original message and the aftermath with my leadership team and with the rest of our company and i want to outline some concrete steps that we'll be taking to do to do better in this regard. All right, so uh, let's see if I can find. So he so he said something offensive, and someone got call, he got called out on it. He did. I'm going to try to find. Um, you know the, how like at the top of his banner it said he his. Yeah. When I remember when we'd be playing basketball for the law firm, and <laughs> the biggest compliment you can get when you're playing basketball is when people would refer to you as him. Like yeah. who's got him? Who's got him? <laughs> He's late us up. So what happened there was Ryan Dancy at the meeting the next day. They're like, get he him in here. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you that HR got... person wrote a hell of a tweet for him to repost, though. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Just... We got a mouse drop oh, real quick. For oh, you. my. Oh, my. Ooh. Ryan Hefferfinger. We love that name, do we not? We do. Ryan confuses. Thank you so much, Ryan Heffelfinger, four ninety nine super chat. Ryan confuses tribalism with gatekeeping, blocking folks for a disagreement over braille dice, and dragging their name in the mud. Five months later, is tribalism. So, uh, what is uh, is he referring to something there? Uh, is this is this Ryan Dancy? Or is he talking about you, Ryan? Ryan I, I don't know. I, I block uh, zero people with the exception of persistent, ridiculous stalkers. And how do I qualify mm-hmm. persistent, ridiculous stalkers? I had a guy that mined my wife's other social media account and sent me a DM with a picture of my, at the time, six-year-old son. He got blocked. But for an right, argument, I, I, it's got to be someone else. Th- this has to be Dancy he's talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, gatekeeping and blocking. Well, I think gatekeeping, I mean, I do think gatekeeping is good, right? Oh, for yeah. I mean, as, as we critical. found out, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty much our our hobby's uh, survival. Well, I was gonna say, sort of depends on it. It might it might be too late. Um, I can't. Um, I don't know if I can find uh, where the original of this was. Um, where the hell? P Leaf is out. P Leaf, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the original tweet is 11 tweet string. I'm I'm trying to find it for you here. Yeah. Where the hell is it? P leaf before you go, where are you at that you have to get up in five hours? Where is that? Because I read the original today. I don't think he, um, I've got it. Hold on. Oh, can you, uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me stop sharing and, um, Well, I've got it from someone that that screen capped it, and I didn't proof it. So, God willing, it's, it's fine. <laughs> really it's fine. what what they say that it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can. 
I think this be it. Oh boy, I can't read that. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I'll read it for you if you want. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Read it. I, I can. I could put my Sparkle Troll music on in the background too. <laughs> well, no, no, no. That comes for the apology. Uh, I've taken more than one thousand game pitches since 2016. I would say that less than 10 percent of these were from female designers. Oh. <gasps> Effectively, Shocking. none of them were games that AEG would publish. We did a call for submissions from female designers specifically. Oh, good. You're sexist. <laughs> we got one publishable design, Mary Posas. There have been a couple of pitches that came close, most commonly where a female pitched with a male designer. But there is one team of two female designers that pitch great, but their games are too light for us. I know why we didn't proceed with those pitches but they were at least in the ballpark typically when i'm pitched by a female the game tends to fall into one of several broad categories it's a game about politics in general we don't publish games about politics it's a party game in general we don't publish party games it's a pitch from a designer very early in their design journey and the game isn't competitive in the modern market See, see, I'm not going to fault him here. I got to, I got to yeah, stop the he's, voice he's, because yeah. he's being honest for yes. once in his damn y yeah. online life. Exactly. Yeah. I, he doesn't he care who made the game. He cares that it's a good game. Yeah, it's which is what we should all be worried about. Yeah. Absolutely. And the thing is, it's like the 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 proof is in the pudding. People will buy a game from a female designer. Gee, we just had dark one go dark, over. Dark, dark, dark. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We had one go, you know, over a million and a half dollars. Um, plenty, plenty. That wasn't all women who bought that. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if people suss out that, yeah, this game could be pretty good or this looks good, uh, they will take a game designed solely by a woman. Um, but yeah, and I don't. But I don't. But I also don't doubt what he's saying here in that they probably have gotten shit because most there's just probably not a lot of women designers just because. This is mostly has mostly been a male hobby. I understand that the demos are changing, and they they are um, a little bit, um, but it's going to take a while for you know women and you know who knows I don't know they, and look there there are differences between the sexes there really are you know women are probably going to write something a little a little different on average. Just so, watch our intro. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's the sound of a siren. Yeah. yeah. Going in the refrigerator. Like, there, there's no need to keep going. Right. He, he's, he, for once, didn't politicize stuff, right? He went in and, and, and said, the horrible thing that our generation is guilty of, uh, we are colorblind, sexblind, all sorts of blinds, and that apparently is bad now. He went in and said, we're, we're, we're looking for games that fit our market and are based on merit. Oh, the horror. Women don't make those kind of games. Yeah. That's like me going to an Italian restaurant and wondering why. <laughs> there's I no ranch get dressing. A... Yes. I, well, there's not, yeah. no. But I can't, the, yeah. I can't get a good shish kebab here. Come on. Where's the, chi where's the uh, chicken lo mein? Exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's. So, That's, it's very well put. Yeah, very, very well put. He's right he's, he's being honest history. for the first time in a while. No, you know what? I he's... defended Dancy. What the hell? Well, you know what? I bet you in private, you, you get him away from people and he's like, is this off the record? He would talk just like one of us. I, I guarantee it. Because there's no way he couldn't. I mean, that just proved that. I mean, he, his eyes are open. Good Lord. I always say, you've heard me say it before. What do people say at the barbershop? That's their real yeah. feelings. Yeah, you know? when they when they know there nobody else is around or they're just bullshitting, and that's what he thought he was doing there. He he got too comfortable on Twitter and was like, "No, oh, I'll just be a moment of candor." And then, of course, you know, like you said, uh, Ryan, um, that's that can't happen. <laughs> Honesty, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> he, he, I mean, he, he violated himself. That was a uh, that wasn't a don't cancel me. Uh, apology that was a don't fire me apology exactly <laughs> that yep. was written that was written uh as ryan said that here's was written what, by hr yeah. here's what you're gonna read tomorrow <laughs> yeah. at one o'clock yep <laughs> 
So what can you do? Um, yeah, he he had it. Like, look, it's just I don't understand why people can't accept that there's just certain there's certain things that are just gonna a certain you know certain demographics are just not going to be as well represented. At no point in there did he say that women can't. He never exactly, said women yeah. can't. He never. But he was, know, yeah, he's being honest. But this is what we've got from women. Right. He said then, we don't get. Right. And he even said, you know, I want. Yes. But yeah. it's not here. Yes. And, they, they, and yeah, again, they, that's okay. All like that. It's okay. All, all the guys, because I know the guy from, um, it was either Cobalt or Paizo was like, hey, you know, we're we're hiring. And by the way, if is there, if you know, if there's any of the, you know, either the alphabet or you know, minorities, uh, please do apply. Essentially I'll check saying whatever I, box you want if it gets me the job. Yeah, we'll we'll hire you. You know, even if you're even if you're not uh, competent, uh, we we will hire you. But yeah, I mean, there's just these these demographics are just not historically represented in the game. And like I said, maybe that's going to change. Who Jeff knows? wants to know where does he work now. Ryan, um, AEG, AEG, yeah. Ald- Aldrich, yeah. yeah, Aldrich, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought that AEG was. Yeah, predominantly board games, but yeah, yeah, they, 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 they did... publish other stuff. They publish books too. So yeah, but in third edition, they 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 did a lot of uh, did. like third edition stuff, uh, supplemental stuff, some pretty Man, good stuff. In, I, in the I, heyday I think of I... that, of the supplements, they put out a lot of stuff. They put yeah. out the the relics and rituals, I think, or am I confusing yeah. them with? No, I think I think you're right. Traps and treachery. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, we use traps and treachery. It's right behind you. Um, yeah. Most, um, that's some I good used... beats in there. I remember picking when I was doing um, Calvin. He got some of his feats from Traps and Treachery. Yeah, the, both those were really good. I liked books. it. I like that they had like a picture of like, you know, the traps. The like, traps. Ah, this is how it works. Because sometimes I do have a problem when it's being described to me. I'm like, how's that going to look? Or how's that going to how's that going to work? I I like that those books. I, I also use the uh, of all things, too. They did something just called the DM's Toolbox which is literally right. just a bunch of tables and names and like, t- you know, 10, you know, like, like food items you'd, you'd get in an inn, you know, and it's like, like in, in a hurry, you're like, Oh yeah, just, Oh yeah. Yeah. You, well, guys, you guys are having the, the, the trencher of, of quail and bacon, you uh-huh. know, or whatever. But, uh, but you know, there's, there's just some good stuff that, you know, just on the spur of the moment. Um, there's a great OSR POD or reprint from, from back in the day. That if you don't have, Oh, See, this is the advantage of having just shit everywhere. I can just reach and grab it. Um, it's organized chaos, Ryan. These guys, <laughs> books and books and books of tables for you. Oh, That's sandbox. all it is. Okay. And it, it's exactly what you were describing, yeah. but it's generic, so you can pop it into any system. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll look I was, for those. They, yeah. They're spectacular. They're cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I'll, I'll definitely cheap, pick them up. Right? I'll pick them and, up. And, hey, soft cover. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> and look, those are in perfect shape. Uh, you don't need to increase the cost by $15. Or... <laughs> because I'm a priss. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Got soft hands. The, the one guy in our group. Uh, like in that movie, like, my you skin. have soft hands like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> he writes the errata in the book, and it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> You don't like that stuff, huh? Yeah. I'll occasionally do that. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to own this book and I'm going to make it mine. So occasionally I'll do that. Not all the time, though. Uh, now, because you get like a PDF version, you can just kind of mark that up um, and just kind of highlight things in there. So I guess if you're printing it out, right? Yeah. Or you can digitally do it. Yeah, I mean, that's I kind of do it digitally. I, I just sometimes I'll have the uh, books on my tablet right there at the table. So um but uh, I always do keep the uh, the paper version handy um, as well. Yeah. So Ryan Dancy got got dragged. And what I liked too was um, a couple of uh, women were like, they said, "Well, you know, Ryan, the problem isn't that they're pitching. You know, the problem is that they're pitching to you. They need to be pitching to a woman." <laughs> Which I just I was oh. laughing at. Yeah. So they could just rubber stamp a bunch of garbage that isn't going to sell. Part and you know what part of the, part of what I want to do because I did a. I did a video on Seattle and all the hypocritical game companies who uh, can't hire any black people. And it's probably, they won't admit this, but it's probably because they don't get any applications from black people because it's just, you know, it's just not been something that they've been interested in. Maybe it'll change. I'm sure there will be in the future. 
But, you know, all they do is just crow about how, you know, virtuous they are. And it's like, I want them to either admit that this is the way things are, which they will never do, or I'm kind of hoping they do this too. Hire a bunch of unqualified people, throw, you know, throw them into the, into the fire, let them produce garbage. And then you guys are worse off for it too, because you're producing garbage that nobody's going to buy. Either and, way, and, we let them, and then you can't let them go either. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a, right. it's an employee for life there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh baby. I, whoever when's he gonna um, quit when's he gonna quit yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when dominique dickey get when they when they puff her up enough to be like oh my god this great quote-unquote game was made by dominique dickey um and it'll happen you know she's she's been on like journeys through the radiant citadel and garbage like that she's terrible just an awful awful uh, adventure designer but they will poof her up and have her be the lead designer on something and they will they will say that it's a success and it'll be uh, accepted that she is, and I will laugh because I'll be like, "All right, now just try to get rid of her." <laughs> no, I'll tell you how they get rid of her. Remember the remember the two bobs in the office. We'll just stop giving her a check. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, and the thing is, she she would act just like him too. She she'd be like, she'd do it for free because she you know well why not? It's more important uh, to you know to her just to be uh, in print. <laughs> Holy cow, we got. A massive oh, nice, mouse drop nice. right here. It's yellow. That's a mouse load, man. That's right. <laughs> dropping a deuce. That's a that that's bordering on a rat dropping. No, that's so big. That's that's big. Combat board games. I, have we seen combat board games before? I don't recognize the name. Um, if if you have been here before and I haven't noticed you, uh, I am sorry. Thank you so much and welcome. Ten dollars. You guys, uh, you guys get me right here. The reason these people get tired of running games is because they deal with X cards mm -hmm. and women in the design discussions and offending the people at the table and representations at the table. Well, yeah, it can wear on you because you're doing something that's going against what is natural. These things are just so unnatural when the, what you did before was just play a game with your friends or, you know, acquaintances or, you know, friends to be. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I said something over the line. Maybe you could just tell just from their reaction, like, ooh, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I won't say that again or something, or I'll, I'll go lighter there. And you know what? If you didn't like what the DM was doing and he was being a dick and just kind of being purposely edgy or something, you're just being like, eh, this game's not for me. Sorry, I'm out. Yeah, so thank you so much, uh, Combat Board Games. Oh my lord, we got, we got it matched. Oh, my lord, mouse dropping. I think there's, I think yeah, there's, there's a lot of mice in the house here. There's shit everywhere. It's like in that. Scene. It's like in that scene in Ratatouille. Remember when they think that it's just him, and it's there's hundreds of them. Oh, my favorite, one of my favorite, one of my favorite comedies is uh, Used Cars from. Back in back in the day with uh, <laughs> Kurt Russell and Jack Warden when he's got a uh, little carnival on his lot and he's like, yeah, it's just what we need, the families. And then the camel goes by and he's like, make sure that camel don't shit all over the lot. <laughs> a virtuoso performance. If you've never seen used cars, uh, Kurt Russell is, of course, great in it. Everybody's great in it. But uh, Jack Warden is uh, magnificent. As, uh, Tremendous. Royal, and Royal. Appreciated. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good in uh, Heaven Can Wait, too. Um Jeff Hatch, our old friend, ten dollars. Thank you so much, Jeff. Speaking of untalented, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast is going to raise the book prices for their books by twenty percent. Yeah, we covered that right at the start, Jeff. Yeah, they um they are doing it, and um they're not making, they're not working with, you know, their print customers because they don't want to. You know, as we discussed, as you know, Ryan was kind of crunching the math, they could easily re uh release some of these things as soft covers, you know, or, you know, have a soft cover and a hard cover. I don't know how hard that would be to do a dual version, but you know, you could really make these affordable by making them, um, soft cover books, you know, like they used to do. I mean, God, the, the complete, whatever handbook, remember back in the day, second edition, you know, those, those are all soft covers. Um, I'll bet you Amazon's wholesale cost doesn't change though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Antonio sure, right? Antonio has a question for everybody. That's good. Uh, I don't. I think he's always been great. Uh, maybe uh, yes. sky high or whatever. I don't know. He was even good. In high that. school so, high. Sky high. Sky high. I oh, think. Yeah, someone was, just typed in high school high. Yeah, I think it was sky high or maybe high school high. Does anybody remember him in Overboard? Remember Overboard? Overboard. 
Oh, oh thank you, Brian. I heard that in the background. Oh, that movie. Calm down there, Lamb. Favorites. I love that one. We got a little mouse dropping right here. Used car and suckers are documentaries. Yes, thank you, Crafty Matt. Yes. God, there's so many good comedy. There was, guys, there is almost no good comedies nowadays. So it's it's really weird. You you literally have to go back in time now. Like, yeah, this is the way comedy used to be. What was the and last you would laugh. good new comedy that you saw? Like, I, I throw up my media center and we'll sit down to watch a movie. And we're watching shit from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah. Honeymoon in Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, the, I don't know uh, if that counts. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. in uh, Thunder. Uh, what's it called? Tropic Thunder. Oh, Tropic gosh. Thunder. Yeah. Is, I is... think that was the last. How did like, he dodge the care. bullet for that, by the way? Everyone else got crucified for it. Even one of the shows that I loved, and I'm certainly very divergent from their politics, but Little Britain back in the day, mm -hmm. they got blasted for the blackface. They yep. had to do the HR apology. Tropic Thunder's okay. Yeah. Well, that's because it was Tony Stark doing I it. I mean, he is Tony Stark, right? That's it. It, was, it was literally because it's Tony Stark and yeah, nothing else. But, I mean, but even the line that he that he offers... Uh, you know, don't it's go just, full retard. Yeah, never, never go full retard. <laughs> if you see, that's why Ryan, when I said honeymoon in Vegas, and you said you kind of disagree, if you can quote movies and it still makes your, it's part of your vernacular. Yes. Oh, yeah. This many years later, that's okay. a sign of a great movie. It is. Yeah, it's I mean, we're genetic. And we we talk about honeymoon in Vegas. We quote that movie on a weekly in some <laughs> fashion. Yes, good movie. Yeah, <laughs> it is Mouse's favorite movie. It's Mouse, my favorite movie. Mouse, he he loves truth it, yeah. right now. Yeah. Not, he is. I, I'm like, putting it to the top of my queue for you, Mouse. I'm going to rewatch go. it. There you go. We talk yeah. about Dumb and Dumber all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a Dumb and Dumber. It. Yeah. The, uh, it's it's good. I don't you know I don't know what to say. I mean it's it's it's. It's crude, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, last week we were all about pre um, Bennett lets him steam yes. off. Commando, yes. uh, commando uh, yeah. Commando, commando just commando. last week. <laughs> Let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> How much uh, Bennett looked like Freddie Mercury? Just I like found. I, I went on. So um, I went on the Googles and I found T-shirts that say Bennett let off some steam, and it's a hole in the like a fake hole in the shirt with steam coming out of it. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty obscure. If anybody gets that, you got you got a you got a potential friend there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we did the. Um, I think we did all the news. Um, so I'm going to. Um... Who Don? What up, Don? I know. Don, what's up? Where's Charlotte at? We haven't had any queens in today. Uh, no, Katie. No. no where's Where's Charlotte? our K W E E N S? We need our queens. Oh well. Perhaps they will show up. Somebody send out the bat signal for uh, for Charlotte. Commando had a young Alyssa Milano in it. Also had, as you pointed out, Mouse, the uh, the guy from the Warriors. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. come out, come, come out, out. Play. He was us. Uh, <laughs> he was the guy that Arnold dangled off the uh, cliff. Remember when I promised to kill you last? <laughs> I lied. I lied. <laughs> um. All right, so I did. I, I do want to address this because I, I think it was. I think it's funny. Um, um, so I did a video on on a spell that I don't like, and I kind of threw another one in there just because you know. I mean, honestly, it's. I was true. I was. I just. I needed a little bit more, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of going on with our you know campaign, our adventure right now. Actually, you can see it in the live play I just uh, did. And the two, <laughs> the two are. Uh, Invisibility, which I think maybe should be a little bit more, it should have some more consequences to it, perhaps. Um, should be a little rarer. You shouldn't just be a, a a wizard who can just you know cast it like boom, invisible, boom, invisible, boom, invisible. And I'm I just was kind of lamenting like eh, maybe it should be a little higher. And then I said, I don't do flying. I don't like flying in my games. I think it's stupid. I think you look silly if you picture it in your mind's eye. And, you know, I, I guess what I would say is, you know, think back to any worthwhile bit of fantasy literature or fantasy movie and show me one where the main party made the hero or the, the party of heroes got up in the air and are floating around 
and just zoomed to their destination. Doesn't happen. And I'm sorry. It's it's so stupid. And I was just kind of expecting like, you know, I, I didn't take a mean tack with it in the video. I was just kind of like, no, nope, no, nope, you know, don't do it. You know, what, but, you know, but, hey, what do you guys think? I, I was not prepared for the little bit of backlash I got. It's like these some of these people like, oh, my oh, my God, Double D, you you've gone off the rails here. Holy smoke. <laughs> Fl flying. What's wrong with flying? Are you a bad GM or what? You know, what's weird is Whoa. because because I, since I've been playing flying's never been an issue at all so to me that one's no big yeah. deal it's almost like to me that spell doesn't exist yeah because right. it doesn't exist. but when you did <laughs> when you talked about invisibility i actually just thought of something now i don't know what the comments all of the comments were from the video maybe when you become visible maybe not everything becomes visible again mm -hmm. like maybe take okay, some time to adjust yeah um, maybe um yeah like one of your fingers isn't back yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's oh, lost shit. in the ether world or whatever. <laughs> and, and people, I think the problem with too was people weren't watching the video. I think it was like a game of telephone because somebody didn't quote tw tag me on Twitter. You know, it's somebody I have no problem with, and you know, I, I have no problem with discussion on this. You know, as if you want to crucify me, that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm a big boy. I you know I may disagree, but hey, in, in the end, it's not a huge deal. I mean, yeah. Geez. Perfect tangent right now is kicking you in the chops. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, flying can be helpful. Well, in in your game, maybe in my game, no, <laughs> never. Um, but uh, but I still love you. It's and that is important to know. I still love you. We can't um, disagree on this channel, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people were saying like, yeah, this guy doesn't know how to handle invisibility. He he wants to get rid of invisibility rings, and I'm like, D when did I say that in the video? I like even went back and rewatched it. I'm like, I never said that. I said what I did say was, if you think about it, in the Lord of the Rings the most powerful artifact in the world, what trait did it give? It gave you invisibility. So I'm just saying maybe maybe it should be a little more reverent than just having a wizard just be like, all right, you're invisible. Eat an eyeball. Yeah, there you eat, go. Eat an eyeball and you know, <laughs> yeah. boom, you're invisible. But people are saying like, you want to ban invisibility? You don't know how to, you know, you don't know how to handle it. I know how to handle invisible. Watch, guys, watch if you can, it, it, I, I don't blame you if you don't, because it's like really long. But uh, if you if you want to like zoom through it, the latest live play, these guys were invisible. Uh, hey, Double D, guess what? Cr creatures can smell. I know they were they were going into knolls, and I had factored that in. And I'm like, all right, these guys aren't in maybe aren't anticipating this. I'm like, okay, these these knolls are going to get a chance to smell them. If you watch the live play, they had a knoll right by him, and you know, kind of dramatically, he's up on the rock. Right, and they're right below, invisible, you know, probably with their breaths held, kind of like that scene in, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, when they're hiding in a log from the Nazgul. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to give this guy a shot to smell you. Well, guess what? I rolled like shit. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force this shit. Here's, here's what I think a lot of folks were saying like, you can counter this so easy, uh, Double D. They're flying. Just have a dragon go by, just have a griffin go by. All right, well, I don't want to fight cheese with cheese because you're just maxing out the, the, the cheese there. But also, you have to sort of consider, like, if you have to invent ways to constantly stop something from happening, is it any better? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> is it inventing ways or is it just ways that nine out of ten DMs aren't seeing that path? Possibly. But and I'm not think, saying you didn't because you, oh, you no, factored no. it in, right? Yeah. People think like, well, you know, you're you're doing you're thinking this way because it's overpowered. I'm not. I I'm doing it because I think it's excessively cheesy. And I just don't I, I've never seen in the world that I run, Birthright, sort of a low magic kind of thing. To look up in the sky and see five people <sighs> doing the Puma Man across the sky. I, I, I can't, I can't, I don't, it would be unfair to the setting. I feel like invisibility, I know that the spell is available. It's in the book or whatever. It's on, it's on Stern's cards. It's almost like a loophole. And now mm -hmm. we got to find a way to get it out of the game. Well, the, the good thing about like birthright is they have something called the shadow world. And um, I think there will be consequences, you know, maybe, you know, when you're doing being invisible in um, 
in birthright, you're touching the shadow world, which maybe draws the attention. That, that of stuff. would make sense. I, I wouldn't that. it? I mean, you that know, it makes I, sense. It's, it's very, uh, very easy. Yeah. So, so people were getting all bent out of shape, and I'm like, guys, guys, I, I understand. Look, you have a higher magic setting, and this, this play, you know, and this is something that happens. I'm fine. Then fine. People were like, well, you know, how do you feel about spell jammer ships? Spell jammer ships are fine. Invisibility is fine, even in our world. I'm just saying, like, maybe there should be a cost to it instead of just kind of, it can kind of maybe turn into a crutch. And and look, if you're giving humans, like, you know, the um, the traits of a basset hound all the time, your players are going to get pissed at you, and rightfully so. If they're like, oh, great, another another guard who has, you know, the ability to uh, to smell like a dog, and he just turns around and, and you know, rakes us with, uh, you know, his weapon. Swinging into his face. Player. Well, we didn't hit the community can of deodorant, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Invisibility is easy to defeat. It is. I mean, any animal that can smell rain, fog, that sort of thing. I, I understand. Yeah, I lost a thief because he got into the water and you could see the water surrounding him. Yeah. Now, you guys got to keep in mind, I'm not. Um, invisibility w was fine. I'm, I'm just I was kind of lamenting that maybe it can be used overused. And yeah, I am aware. Like, like I said, they were going into this, and I was thinking in my mind, like, well, these gnolls are essentially dog people. They can smell, so they're going to get a chance to uh, smell. And you know what? Even though they were invisible, they started to make a lot of noise. They heard them. The jig was up. Boom. You know. So, I, but I'm just, I was just kind of saying, like, I don't know. Is the answer to a lot of problems them just turning invisible? I don't know. Yeah, maybe just have some kind of a cost, you know, or maybe it just gets boring or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Play the way you want to play. But I will say this. I just I don't allow flying because I think it I think it would just look too cheesy. I, I don't I don't think it's overpowered necessarily. Yes, I know guys could just bombard them from the ground, you know, with like like an iron dome of, you know, missiles and, and stuff like that. <laughs> That's fine. I'm laughing every time you talk about flying because today in my design journey, I just finished my flight rules. Ah. <laughs> For my, now, now, to Get be fair, <laughs> to be fair, it's a bird species, right? Well, yeah, that makes it. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, if you have wings, that's that's fine. Um, if you're if you're playing a race that has wings, guess what? You can fly. Feeling indulgent. Yeah. In, re in regards to the invisibility, I'm going, I'm going to divert to uh, Crazy Mouse here. Mm -hmm. um, you know. At, at some point, you know, you, Crazy Mouse had to do something during during the game, you know, and he got he actually got to, you know, do Roll what his character does, mm -hmm. you know, without the use of of. You know, I left the invisibility bubble to go know, and, and do my stuff. Yeah, which is like it, it turned like I I my my opinion was that it turned into a crutch. It, it turned into a poorly used crutch. Yeah, and I, got, I don't mind it popping on every once in a while, you know, if it's if it fit, you know, fits. But I'm just saying, like, you know, in our it, game right so, now, we are literally we had Stern count how many more times he could use it. Yes. Like we're the right now, this right. adventure well, is but relying. If you notice, I did tell him, like, because oh, wow, yeah. he needs an eyeball to cast it in Castles and Crusades. That's the component. But it has to be wrapped in this tarry substance. And he's like, well, I, you know, I found more eyeballs. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't. You don't yeah. have an endless supply of this substance that you need to wrap this in. I'm like, I got, got all this dope, paper. but I don't have any paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No paper. I have any more needles to shoot it with. Uh, you were going to show something, uh, Ryan? I, I was just, I, it, it's passed. I was just going to, uh, more for you, but if you want to show it, you sure. Surely right. can. I'm not gonna. Is it a clip of honeymoon in Vegas? <laughs> it is not a clip of honeymoon in Vegas. Let's I don't have this. that readily accessible. <laughs> it was it was the the oh. Birdman. Um, oh yeah. yeah, bring it. That can oh, yeah. fly. Um, this is this is new yeah. stuff that that. Feather folk. Ooh. The, the layout's not done yet, but um, yeah, I just I just pretty good to me. Calculated their their flight and their costs and made sure it was balanced and it's off. I have uh, four groups that are going to play test this race. But again, you know, it's probably a member of a party that's one in ten parties because yeah, you're, you're not sure. going to have a bird man walking around in every city. So um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I agree. The whole party's not just going to up and up and go. So. so this is a this is a book you're writing. Yep, yep. This is uh, Aura's the the role playing game that. Uh, Do you have stuff available now? Can we? I am. Uh, well, it's 
officially not announced and I'm trickling stuff out for the handful of folks that know it on the Twitter account. The Twitter account's public, but um, we're looking for a fourth quarter or first quarter um, full launch for it. Ryan, when uh, you do, can you please send us that so we can put it on a banner and run it at the bottom? No, you got it. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll help you. And we're going to do a, a public character creation beta soon-ish. And soon means like zero to three months where yeah. everybody can just go in with character creation rules because it's not like the big six stats, right? It's completely different um, by right. design. So good. good. Max has a question for you. I think it's probably for you, Ryan. He's got wings and hands. <laughs> he's got Ooh, wings yeah. and hands if he's a feather folk. Got him, um, got him both covered. It's got hybrid. both covered. It's it's literally a bird humanoid. He's um, not a harpy. <laughs> not a harpy. <laughs> but not a harpy. No, they're they're yeah. they're weird bird bird folk. But it, it's it's odd. So when you see me chuckling every time you shit on flight tonight, <laughs> it's well, because is... I literally thought about flight and did math about flight for at least five hours today. <laughs> well, and this is and this is the kind of stuff you should be uh you know, doing flight four. I'm just saying like castles and crusades has a, um, they have this sort of, it's part of their system. Like, look, it's, if you're going to try to do something that somebody else is good at, like not everybody can sneak like a thief. So if they do it, if somebody else tries it, they're going to be penalized or you're kind of stepping on the toes of the thief. And I love that about this system. I love it. So, yeah. So when you got somebody there who can fly, it kind of diminishes the fact, you know, they're sort of, their thing if you know the wizard can just kind of go like okay guys well i know he can fly let's all fly we're all flying fly the friendly skies kind of like oprah you get a car you, you get a car you get a plane you, you get, get you get wings, wings. You, you get wings get everybody got wings so i, I, I just i kind of look at it in regards to flight and flying you know uh, um obviously we have a, a, a bird creature utilizing flight with wings he has wings that's flight Yes, yeah, flying. or like a demon with wings. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I've always agreed with with you in regards to flying. Flying, mm -hmm. like you know, we always it can't be a bunch of William Cats out there in a red suit. Yeah, yeah, you know, greatest we, American you know, hero. Yeah, but, it's, you know, no, it's 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 it is kind of stupid, and it, and you know, and nobody can nobody can back up. You know what I said earlier. Like, just show me show me one good book or one good movie where it's happened it doesn't and everybody will will say like well guess what double d you know you're not you're not playing a book you know but guess you know what you, you sort of are oh you know, i lean into these tropes I, it's, it's I, part of the background I, I feel like our campaign is a movie yeah i'm always saying which character i think that person is uh, what actor is playing that character yeah, and i always when we're trying to give a chip to make a movie like scene you ask us to do yeah. like things like that yeah. as well like describe this exactly what are you doing well i'm going to show it like it's a, in a movie and i want to show you what my character is going to do and how i'm going to jump off this table and onto the chandelier and swing over here yeah. you know make it cinematic yeah exactly yeah. And you're also by by long flight. You're also depriving the PCs of the time honored tradition of traveling together. Sometimes it is about the journey and less about the destination. How many NPCs are you going to bypass while you're zooming over them at you know a thousand, you know fifteen hundred feet? That's a great point. Plenty of plenty of adventure. Plenty of folk. remember. Plenty of girls for Stern to knock up. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that <laughs> yes. rune that's carved into the tree. You're not going to see it. Yeah, right? exactly. And it's like these these guys met just, you know, and they went up north and uh, they were coming back. There was, uh, you know, a town got burned, you know, by these imperial uh, troops. And, uh, you know, they met this kind of this this fat woman who was, you know, kind of speaking for, you know, her husband and blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was kind of just an interesting encounter. It was. But yeah, it's like it didn't it wasn't game changing. But, you know, it's like ah, slice of life. You know, this is one of the refugees from the city, you know, who's sitting there just kind of going off about stuff that happened and how angry she is and, you know, how helpless she felt. And she's, you know, speaking over her husband and all that, but it's like, all right. And she's gone. You probably never to be met again. That, that breathes, that breathes life into the game. In, 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 oh, yeah. you know, into the world that you've built, you know, all those little details are important. Or if we just yeah. walk around and, and, and not have yeah. any of those. Doesn't it humanize our characters a little bit? It does. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. does. It just, it just really, it adds, it adds a, uh, um, a realistic a a attitude to it, you know? 
Yeah, and you can exactly. It was a great point. And you can just you can just as easily, I know, say on the ground like, okay, you guys travel a few days on horseback and you get there. I understand. There's and there's times as a DM that's all you want. You know, you don't you don't need them commiserating with everybody, every NPC on the road. You know, but at least you have that option. If they if they're flying, you know, it's it's always like, all right, well, you guys get there. Or guess what, guys? There's another griffin up yeah. in the sky. Oh, yeah. I guess this, this place is lousy with griffins and dragons. And, you know, hey, Ren. Yeah, and there's there's archers who just happen to be looking up as you're going by it, you know, 50 miles an hour. And they, they got their they got their bows ready because they just know somebody's coming. You know, <laughs> they have an attack of opportunity just waiting. <laughs> I don't know. Guys. Yeah, you're flying. Roll dexterity. There's a flock of geese coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like some of these people are like, they're getting so angry. And it's like, I, I look, if you play in a high, I understand the difference between a low fantasy campaign, which we're in, and a high one. If this is stuff in a high fantasy campaign, then I understand flying is completely normal. But I like to play in like a more traditional, you know, not quite Game of Thrones or anything like that. But, you know, I mean, it's, you know, just it's kind of your traditional D and D. Now, what percentage of these folks that were on you fall into that sparkle troll category? <laughs> where I walk into the magic store and I want my plus nineteen vorpal sword, and I just can buy it. Here's my gold. Like, how many? How many of that segment I honest, were, were I busting your balls? Think, I don't think there's too many. But I think it's actually like loyal, loyal fans who are just, you know, <laughs> they're just like double D. You are way off. You know what, what is that's the, the day double like, D. Oh, that's the day you went from 2,000 subscribers yeah, to 1999. Yeah, yeah. You, you lost a couple. Yeah, these guys. guys, you have to know. I understand. Look, I'll we're, we're doing this. Him. I'll show him. Click. I tell you what. Um, what, what I will do. Um, any of you guys that want to come on and defend it, I'll, I'll give you your say, of course. And look, let's, let's throw that look. link up there, Double yeah, D. We'll, we'll keep it respectable here if you want to come in. Um, if we don't agree with you, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're done. You're done. So if you want to come in and just maybe talk about this, or if you have an, like an, an interesting, quick, you know, story, um, is that link supposed to be lit up? Double D. It is. I think it is for them. Okay, it is for them. Yeah, they, they should be able to. I'll, I'll throw it in there again. Um, so yeah, if, if any of you guys want to uh, come in, you just need a microphone. I guess I'm looking. I'll it's, tell you who I'm waiting to hear from. Is it Kobenheiser? Kobenheiser. Yeah, it's, I saw that. He's yeah. yeah I love flying like, games. All right, buddy. Yeah. Come on, Come buddy. On. Come on he's, he's one of my uh, most loyal fans. Absolutely. I, I love you, Cobanizer. And I understand. Like, look, we may, we may not agree on this, but uh, I'm just, I'm not a flying guy. I can't get over the fact that if you look up, you're going <laughs> to see guys just floating up there. Or worse, they're going to like be like supermaning it. Uh, <laughs> that would be even worse. Guys, just picture it. Can't, can't you picture it in your mind's eye? I'm picturing when you're talking about flying. I'm picturing Rapper's Delight from the Sugar Hill Gang when he talks about Superman yep. Yep. flying through his air in the air in his pantyhose. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 a, yeah, exactly. You're a you're a peasant out in the field, and they're like, "Oh my God, what is that up there?" That's jumping it's way back about us. Why is this guy pissing on me? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, uh, the is it my toil enough? I mean, <laughs> hey, it's raining. When the Dave Matthews band like unleashed their uh, commode commode over that bridge or something, uh, it might oh. have been near where someone lived. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. It's our friend Max. Hi, Max. Hello. How are you doing, the buddy and the crew? Buddy, how are you doing? Max, how's it going? Doing fine. Double D, I I want to say, I know you got slack for it, but I, I agree with your take on flying. I, <laughs> Thank you. I, I should have come in there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But I am I tend to be a low fantasy and low magic guy. Yeah. So it, that's not a surprise yeah. for coming from me. But like, yep. because I think like at some point, you just become like out of control. And like you said, you always have to kind of find some gimmick to kind of counteract it. And at some point, you just like, it just become like ridiculous and, and silly. Yeah. And yep, that's exactly what it's I'm also. It's also like a problem with uh, I, th I think there's a problem with magic, with magic in general. Like I was saying in chat, like so many of the restriction that comes with magic are end wave and stuff like that, and and there's no risk. And then at some point, like magic just become a, a technology if it's like fully reliable and stuff like that. If you go like with DCC and stuff like that, I know that uh, there was like P Leaf that was uh, shitting this game and uh, 
then you oh you always get like a risk with magic and stuff like that and that helps mm -hmm. a lot but, I, I, yeah. I love that about DCC and that's, yeah. you know, if there's one thing, you know, if I'd have maybe thought ahead, I'd have been maybe try to work something like that, even into castles and crusades. Cause I mean, I'm sure the guys who create, you know, the troll or guys would be like, yeah, if you want to, if you want to do a spell check, you know, knock yourself out, do it. Um, mm -hmm. It's we're probably, it's probably too late now, you know, cause we, we've been sort of into it, but uh, I, look, the, none of these guys have complained that fly is out. They're like, yeah, of course. Why, why wouldn't we go on horseback? You know, but I understand there's, there's some folks who uh, are in, you know, high magic campaigns. And I mean, if you're having a great time with it, then um, absolutely, you know, keep yeah. it in there. Um, if it fits, you know, and it's like, all right, we may make fun of it for like birthright and, you know, stuff like that. But maybe in your world, yeah, there are, I hate to say it, dragons just kind of flying about. And it's like, all right, if, if that's the way it is and everybody's having fun, there's nothing wrong with it then, then absolutely. Hmm. Yep. Got uh, got Max getting a uh, shout out from there. <laughs> yeah. Lord, what, what else do we got? Any COVID even, coming even in, in a, even in five E, they have the like they have those concentration check that are supposed to kind of increase a risk. But then they try they always like try to in, uh, integrate like this thing that would in, include a risk. But then they nerf it so much that it's not really a risk. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, even. Mm -hmm. Even um, Castles and Crusades does have a concentration check. It's not very well defined. There are some there are some things in the game, and I think maybe it's purposely so, mm -hmm. um, where they're, where they're kind of like, well, you know, if if you're disrupted or you know whatever, make a concentration check, and they kind of leave that open ended, which you know, you, I guess maybe you could use for you know for stuff like this. Yeah, um, like and there need to be a risk to it, like if you want to, because it's so, like you said, it's very powerful. It can be abused and stuff like that. Yeah, magic in three five three five works like technology featured on a bug. Yeah, I guess I would yeah. I would agree with that, Kobanizer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But also like what bothers me in that, like it's like they make magic like technology, it's very reliable and stuff like that. But then and especially like in a later edition where like everybody can have magic and almost every class has magic and there's can trips everywhere. Yeah. And yeah, it five doesn't... Years insane like We've nine talked about thieves had magic and i never went down that path as a thief but yeah. they had magic nine yeah. out of 12 classes have uh have magic yeah and it doesn't it doesn't impact the world outside of like the adventurer but like if you had a world where magic would, would work so well and always work and you got we could have cantrip like you would have like the whole society would organize itself in function of that and, Thank but you, Max. So it, it's You're, never like taken into account. Yeah. We got hey. someone on hold, don't we? Double D. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's Ryan. All right. Ryan, how you doing? Hey, Double D. I how gotta say, I agree with you on the flying thing. I don't know about the invisibility, but I haven't mm -hmm. had too much experience on that part. Yeah, not like I said, I, I do want to be clear. I'm not trying to uh I'm not trying to get rid of invisibility. You guys have to understand that. I, I just, I'm just kind of lamenting. Maybe it should be a little higher cost. Maybe there's some unintended consequences. It draws the attention of certain things here or there. Um, you know, that's all I'm saying for invisibility. I'm not trying to get that out of the game. Unlike Fly, which is out of my personal game. Well, I think the issue is like uh, systems like 5e and Castles and Crusaders use fancy and magic where it's not rule to cast where you lose the ability to cast yeah. the spell for a while. For sure, for sure, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I agree. W well said. When um, you guys play in your games, what characters, what um, what classes are you? Like like Ryan David. What are when you play? Oh, you're always a GM. You never get. <laughs> <laughs> you never get. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a megalomaniac. I have to be the forever GM. <laughs> no, if on the occasion that I play, I, I always try to really branch out and say what haven't i played in a while what haven't i ever played that sort of thing the older i get the more i skew towards cleric it's weird <laughs> um, yeah. but um, I, I do too actually one really? of my when i played i used to be the dm all the time and when somebody was like oh i'll, I'll dm i'm like yeah i'll make a, a character it was a cleric. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, make the reason i was asking that is the people that are so against like getting rid of flying or getting rid of invisibility are these magic users that are saying this because i'm a thief and i can't stand some of these spells you know i just think i'm not for getting rid of any of them i understand the argument both ways mm -hmm. um i 
I agree that I, I tend to skew lower magic in my campaigns because it's ridiculous to think that a magic shop exists. Uh, Max hit the nail on the head when he said, you know, if we had a society that had easy access to magic, it would instantly collapse because it couldn't support itself. It, uh, you're either going to have Utopia, and then you know what happens on day time. three of Utopia, right? You know, if, yep. if it was in Imperial City and there was a magic store, it would get raided every Done. every time they got a truck. Right. They're getting a truck in this week. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's over. And I, I had one specific player in recent memory that was just not able to wrap his head around it. He had come from a, a, a group that exclusively played fifth edition and he's, you know, younger, uh, he, <laughs> twitching. Yeah. Uh, he barely made my age cut, uh, <laughs> which is arbitrary line in the sand. It doesn't mean that I won't have someone younger. It's just, I really look closer because there's a difference in not only play style but personalities once you yeah. get two generations removed yep. oh i'm an ageist yeah go fuck yourself um uh, <laughs> yeah but yeah. he could not you know, well i want to buy a plus one whatever it is i was like that's great um the the shop owner says i, I don't have any of those i would love to have one of those i know this guy that knows the guy that can get one but he's gonna need you to carry out three assassinations to to, to even have an audience with him for yeah. the ability he's like dude it's a plus one and i was like dude it doesn't exist if i could go to the Target. gun store and buy a gun of always hits how many of those are going to be in stock are they just going to crank them out yeah exactly yeah yeah for sure someone has a question for ryan h and they're just asking if you're in a store or a classroom uh, I'm at college. I'm getting ready to play uh, some. What am I playing tonight? Some Shadow Dark, and uh, I have an agreement oh, nice. where I don't engage in uh, tabletop RPGs at home because it's of the devil and the whole. Oh, really? And it oh can boy! Oh wow! Well, really? Well, to be oh, fair, dark and dark, 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 dark is also <laughs> a tool of the devil. So. <laughs> well, so it's a shame. You, on you. Yeah, it's a shame you have to kind of kind of sneak around like that. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, if, if only they knew the truth that, um, I don't know, it's, it's not really of the devil. It's just, uh, you know, mo the modern game is um, is, is very much not uh, of that. I don't know. There was a follow-up question for that for Ryan H. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a peg hook is. I'm sorry. It's the, 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 the wall next to you. Guys. The Community little slot college. there. The wall to your left, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I'm at a community college. Yeah. Nice, nice. Got to use that GI Bill while I can. How, how, I, wanted, I wanted to uh, add something to uh, crazy, what Crazy Mouse said, like I, because like like I'm also a forever GM, but when I uh, when I do play, I do tend to avoid arcane ca or arcane class, and I can see like those spells that fly, like fly like are very annoying for teeth. But it's not only fly; it's like knock and uh, also like you know like every like, everything the teeth can do. At some point, a magic user can just like, ah, oh, I can, I can do like that, that better. Yeah. And right. Knock was developed as a solution when the hobby wasn't what it is hmm. for when you had three guys playing D&D &D because you couldn't get a group. It was the solution to, well, do we have a wizard or do we have a thief? Right. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. That, that is a great point. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Quiet, Ryan. You're making sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not allowed Look. to do that. <laughs> well, so, any, anything else to add, uh, Ryan Heppelfinger? Yeah. Uh, um, I was wondering what makes invisibility a cheese spell versus sleep. Because that's one that gets mass spammed a bunch. Yeah. And I, you have to understand, I'm not saying invisibility is cheesy. Uh, I'm just saying it can be... Um, it can be overused um, and, and kind of turn into a crutch. Like a, every, every problem can almost be solved. Like, well, turn so-and-so invisible this time, or let's all, you know, turn invisible this time. And I'm just saying, I understand completely. And because it's sort of embedded in kind of fantasy tropes, you know, I understand it's, it's value. So you have, you guys, please understand. I'm not trying to get rid of invisibility. I'm just saying like, well, Maybe there should should definitely you should think about in game consequences of maybe using it too much. That's all. Um, all right. 
that, like that, those that's where they like there's like corruption like if you use a spell a lot like it impacts you and stuff like that i think this is a great great addition to a system like yeah. like magic should be seen as with a or maybe as evil or like with some some suspicion there should be like consequence you always should like yeah. because nothing in life is free if you have get like all those power you should be able to give you should have to give something away let's let's admit the dcc like got like magic that. right mm -hmm. i mean they've of all the of all the mainstream sort of games, I, I'm gonna let you go, Ryan Heffelfinger. I hope you have a great game, and thank you, uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for giving well, us your opinions. Nito should unblock me if he wants discussion, man. See you guys. <laughs> all, right, all right. Oh, uh, apparently it was me. <laughs> so, all right. Let's. Uh, we'll we'll see if we can rectify that. I'm not gonna speak for Ryan, but uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna look, and I yeah. will get a resolution within like three right. minutes because I'm all gonna right. put the the ladies on the on the cause, mm -hmm. and. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it, Heffelfinger. And if if I'm right, I'm going to yeah. put you on blast on this stream right now. So just <laughs> oh, fair <boy>. warning. <laughs> um, Yikes. We got someone coming in. Blaine. Uh, yeah, Blaine is here. How you doing, Blaine? Are you there? Blaine. Talk to us, Blaine. I think you may be uh, muted. Hold on. You may be muted. Um, is that self-muted? It says that you're uh, muted, uh, Blaine. So uh, well, we'll figure. Yeah, we we'll, can figure that out and join. Tell what, yeah. Tell you what, I will uh, remove you just for now, but I'll keep you backstage. Um, you know, uh, we'll see if there's any mic issues there. But uh, yeah, but yeah, no I'll, interesting discussion. Interesting I would have to uh, to bounce as well because like I, oh. I was just like I just wanted to uh, come in quickly, give you some support on this <laughs> on this <laughs> no, important thank issue. Thank you. And it's I don't need yeah. support. I, I don't I don't no, feel no, under no, siege. No, 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 I hope no. everybody knows this. I, this is all in good. It's a healthy it's debate. Yeah. I just, I just, yeah. Just to the opportunity right. to uh, come come yeah. chat a bit, say hi. Yeah. Uh, congratulations Any, on 2,000 subscribers. Anytime. Thank you so much. Yeah, Max, you're welcome anytime. And you know, of course, uh, if you wanted to, you could hang around like Ryan. Um, you know. Yeah. Nope. No. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe one day. But like. I have stuff to do as well. Like I still have like a. I just took a little break there to come and chat. All right, no problem. Take care. Buddy. Thank <laughs> you. Nice. Thank we'll you. see you next. Um, yeah. So I don't know, guys. Um, you know, don't uh, don't take it personally. I'm I'm not saying you're you're playing the game wrong. Um, I'm just saying. Um, I don't know. Just it 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 isn't fly fly is not a good fit for me, for us. And, um, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, anything else? Uh, is, is everybody calm down now? <laughs> Copenizer, I need you to type out. Let us know that you're okay. Let us know that you're not uh, going ballistic or tearing the uh, the stuffing out of your couch. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. Uh, <laughs> caller, are you there? I think uh, I think I think Blaine uh, Blaine uh, may maybe jumped off. So I don't know. Maybe there maybe there was just a mic issue. Blaine, um, come back some other time. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, maybe you got else? nervous. A million. Oh, seriously. Nope. There million, we go. Nope. Nope. Millions of people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nope. Not it at all. Millions. Like, not That's okay. Uh, when you get one that does and uh, jump back in next time, we do this pretty much every week. Um, now how are you for time, Ryan? Did you uh, did you want to uh, do uh, well, do some business uh, right can, now? Uh, not even business, right? I don't need anybody to buy anything. Um, we're looking at a milestone for the audio podcast, which is a, a, a big thing, and for our Twitter. Uh, and right now, we're in our strive for our one thousand, right? So it, it's 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 sort of two fisted, right? We're hovering within. 150 downloads usually uh, of hitting a thousand on the audio podcast across all of our podcast providers, and we're hovering right around the thousand Twitter follower mark. So, dumbass me said, "Hey, you know, I found two of these books that were stored, and it was a guide to the Death Star, and I don't have it because it's upstairs. I would mm -hmm. I would be holding it right now." And I put a tweet out as I often do without thinking first, and I said, "You know, if we hit a thousand by the end of May." I'll just give this away, retweet, you know, do the things, retweet, reply, yep. hit like it, and that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, the two ladies that run our Twitter account, generally speaking, uh, for the podcast said, well, why don't we ask some of our friends and creators, you know, if they'll give us like a PDF here and there. And they came through with amazing stuff so we're going to be doing giveaways like every two weeks for most March. of the summer we love it 
Yeah. yeah uh, I'm going to give away that Death Star book, which is like trivial. Uh, someone in the chat right now, Patty's Parlor Games. If you haven't seen yeah. Patty's art, it's really gritty and amazing. I, I like Patty. Yeah. Um, I looked at, at some of his. He made a very, very funny. Uh, like adventure. I oh, think like I did, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Patty I want to see what he could do with like a straight. Like I said, I said, this is good. I said, I want to see you just take, you know, take maybe the satire down and just kind of go straight down the fairway and see what you can do. Yeah. He's and, good. Uh, I, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for him, but I think it's pretty much public knowledge. He's working on a Chalt, um module that, that he's going to be releasing. Uh, but he stepped up and he said, Hey, I'll give a free art commission. So in May, but if you get in by the end of the month of May, follow at NerdCognito on Twitter and, you know, subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice. Uh, not only will you get my lovely voice with the Burt Hole uh, every week <laughs> delivered to your podcast player, but you'll be entered to win and keep watching in June. I've got from Giant Slayer Games an entire miniature set. It's uh, a tribe of goblins with their ogre leader. It's, it's, it's cool stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah David Gwill is giving us a hard copy of his Dungeons and Delvers 500 page Beast, which is an amazing system. Um, so uh, our friends at the Red Room, Wretched RPG, and some modules. Uh, okay. Tony at Frack Brain Studios. He just had a successful Kickstarter. His product's not even out yet. He said, I'm going to give someone the, the core set. So there's there's just stuff upon stuff upon stuff all yeah. summer. We want to we wanna grow and grow and grow. And you know, it's tough. When you hit this weird phase, there's these plateaus, right? Where you just feel like you're walking through quicksand. And we still have upward growth. We've never gone down, thank goodness. Yeah. But we want to we want to keep it going, and it all started with a, a silly Star Wars book that I was going to give away. Um, I can't <laughs> thank the creators and friends that have donated stuff. I'm sure there are people that I've forgotten um, because we have stuff in the bank for at least the next five six weeks. Uh, it, it's crazy, not counting the one that's running right now. And it's um, uh, it's just as easy as following uh, at NerdCognito on Twitter. Follow at NerdCognito on Twitter. Look for the promotional posts and do the things on the posts. And, of course, the thing that we ask, nod, nod, wink, wink, is that you also subscribe to the podcast, right? Yeah, and, it's guys, it's worth it because it's something you can listen to when you're working out, when you're taking a walk on your lunch hour. Um, and it's Or, or just your drive home. Just, yeah, your drive home. It's, it's a good listen. I mean, I hope you guys not to uh, – <laughs> Not to butter you up too much, Ryan, but uh, your your voice is uh, silky smooth. I mean, I, I oh. thought I ha I thought I had a line, but holy smokes! Come on now, this is that is a radio voice if I've ever heard one. Yeah, so you you um come off very well on a podcast. Um, um I was listening upstairs, and um, it, it's a good podcast. And You're um, make the, me blush, but I thank yeah. you. That's oh no, it is. Like I said, we were talking earlier about you and uh, your co-host uh, Bert, and uh, you know, you guys don't always agree, uh, but uh, it's good conversation. And um, yeah, it's like a uh, kind of just a radio version of maybe what you'll find here, but you know, with different insights, of course, because uh, you know, different folks. So uh, definitely check them out, subscribe, download, and uh, you know, if you're on Twitter, you can follow them as well, keep track of uh, what they're doing, and uh, you may get some uh, pretty cool stuff if you do. Yeah, awesome. You're gonna get stuff. cool stuff anyway. They're gonna get a they're gonna get to listen <laughs> to a good podcast. And God. how often do you do your new material? Well, we're weekly. We drop on Tuesdays um, mm -hmm. this week because, you know, we, we are friends and we sometimes just get carried away. We had a whole segment that uh, Bert dug up some. You guys know how top whatever lists are always bullshit. Well, we like to bag on them. It's a running gag on our show. Uh, he found the top 100 horror movies because we do nerdy stuff. We talk about tabletop, of course, like our focus. Um board games, but we also go into a little bit of pop culture and stuff, so we uh, dissected at least the top ten on that list, and it's going to launch as a bonus episode this Saturday. Uh, we call them Nano Nerd Cognitos because they're shorter format stuff. But typically, we drop once a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I am crazy busy with real life stuff, but usually uh, pretty consistently, we've been hitting the Tuesday yeah. mark, so there you go. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough and everybody in the chat. I, I hope to, if you're not part of the Nerd Cognito Nation, that you, that you hop on board and 
guys here, you guys got to come on sometime too. Um, Bert gets sick all the time. You know, I invite him over for dinner, and then the next day he's like sick for three days. I don't get it. Uh, You don't know what's going on there. If that ever happens, uh, you guys got to free up. We record Sunday nights usually, so I don't know what that's like. Fine with me. I'm I'm always a. open for that yeah you know, and i'm sure at least one of these guys uh would, could probably could probably yeah. manage for sure and i'm not opposed to having you know a third person with a brain on i mean a third person <laughs> is another perspective so um well these guys are good co-hosts because they, they know when to jump in you know so it's uh that's a uh it's a, it's a very good system we have here, i like so. when you mentioned pop culture to be honest i like yeah. that type of stuff well mouse yeah. when we have an episode that is something movies music something like that you will will reach out you gotta yeah. come on you can be you can be the, oh, yeah. the, the second and we'll kick bert into the back seat <laughs> he's he's used to the second chair so he's, he's, he's gonna slide right in yeah, he's, <laughs> i'm starting to feel bad for this bert dude no don't feel bad for him don't, don't he deserves uh, sometimes sparkle troll sympathizer so don't Ooh, feel bad for him yeah, we gotta we gotta break him of that habit yeah we gotta we gotta, we gotta bust him i want a sparkle tr- troll t-shirt you can still get them too Are they available? Um, uh, we did our, our T-shirt drive, right, where yeah. we sold the Sparkle Troll T-shirts, which are uh, overpriced T-shirts to, to raise money to pay the bills. Um, the the drive is over, but the vendor is still doing them print on demand. They're two bucks more expensive. So it's a overpriced T-shirt that's two dollars more now, but you can get it printed on demand. Uh, go to nerdcognito.com. And uh, I believe the link is there. And if I can find it, uh, I'll throw it in the chat tonight, too. Yeah, please do. Please yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I should have worn it, but I think it's dirty because I've been like, I love it. It's a, <laughs> not to shill, but to shill. Like, there's a classic and a premium. The premium one is like a super soft poly cotton Ooh. blend that just feels lovely against my skin. I like so. those kind of t-shirts. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. the old scratchy ones it's, that... Uh, yeah. You know what's These funny ones? is... um. I always, when we went to Gen Con, remember I had this freaking, I had all these little side hustles I was planning. Uh, Double D's daughter is a phenomenal artist, and we were going to make these postcards. Yes. And we were going to sell them, and I was going to just buy shit tons of t-shirts with Old Navy and sell them. And we, remember we were making our own little food cart yeah, thing that yeah, we were going to do? Yeah, selling the he was gonna, yeah, he was going to, he's like, oh, I could make sandwiches. sandwiches oh, man. I was he's like, like, I'll make a sandwich, a can of pop. And like a T-shirt, and it'll be like a package deal. Oh, it was, it was <laughs> all I pictured right. was forty thousand customers as I was walking through the vendor hall. That's all, all I, could, I pictured. All I could picture is you doing that. Then all of a sudden, we're running. <laughs> Security's coming. Get them! Get them! Get them! I, I, I no! the, the Sparkle yeah, Troll T-shirt link into the chat. Make sure you use that link. Um, there was this controversy. Like eight of those Chinese knockoff sites. Uh, oh, image yeah. harvested it and there if you search it on google like it, it's like cockroaches every time you kill one three more appear oh, uh, i've done nice. a bunch of dmca takedowns but i just have thrown my hands up i can't i can't i can't squash it so yeah. make sure you get the one from bonfire that's at the link that i put into the chat on youtube right now okay cool. because there are uh knock like, like, who am I? I'm nobody. Why are you knocking off my T-shirt? They're knockoff Sparkle Troll T-shirts, if you can believe that. So you put they it. Don't, they don't. I don't see it in the comments here. So it's on the comments on the web on the video. It's itself. on the YouTube chat. I'm gonna. I, I put the link into private chat awesome. if if you want to put no, it no, there. No, no, no. Okay, thank. You. I just saw yep, it. Yep. But that one on the YouTube videos, that's perfect because that's the one that we can see when we're rewatching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll awesome. do it in both. We'll do it in both. Uh, we'll, Much uh, thank you. Because you can oh, cut and, and paste it if uh, if need be from here too. So we we got you covered uh, every way around. No, it's a, it's like... it's really cool. Even though like uh, we don't make anything on the t-shirts, trust me. <laughs> but good um, advertising though, right? It, it's it's good advertising, and you know it's got a skilled hair sparkle troll. What more do you want? <laughs> well, and there's 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 value in just the term sparkle troll because I you know when I I kind of came into this uh, this community. You know, it was uh, it was kind of a uh, 
like, I guess kind of a new term for me. And I'm like, sparkle troll. I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, well, I kind of had a, I kind of <laughs> knew what it was, but I was like, this is kind of funny. I'm like, I like this. So yeah, it I started flew that. out of my mouth and it is like my biggest contribution to the hobby. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, no, but, it's oh, a, it's a very good thing. It is a positive contribution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I still look back at it. And I'm like, wow, like I kind of made that up. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. It, it'll live, it'll live on. It, it, it will live on, you know, the with... sign of a good movie. <laughs> there you go. Like, um, what, what am I watching again? Honeymoon in Honeymoon Vegas. In Vegas. Honeymoon in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I promise um, I won't forget. It's my Swiss cheese MS brain. That's all. <laughs> um, let's see here. We could do a little bit of this. If you need to, uh, to nope out, uh, Ryan, please do. But uh, yeah, I we... might. I might excuse myself only because the the seven year old yeah. has checked in twice that I see him before bed. Yep. So something's yep. up, and I have yep. a feeling it's either Minecraft related or he's in trouble <laughs> with mom. So <laughs> it's a good uh, good good place to jump out. So yeah, hey, so guys, check I... out. Uh, yeah, Nerd Cognito, all the stuff we said. You guys know. Um, was... Check them out. Yeah, Ryan, I, have a great night. Thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate Absolutely. it. I I really had a blast and. Uh, Maybe, like I said, you guys are welcome anytime. Maybe if I have a Tuesday where I can sneak out again, maybe I'll join you again. Yeah, please do. Have a good All night, right. guys. Yep. Take care, Ryan. Have a good night, yep. chat. See yep. you, everybody. Take yep. care. I know. All right. While, we, while we were chatting, we can start the show now because Charlotte joined us. Oh, Charlotte. Yeah, gee, Charlotte. Charlotte she said she had errands to run. She's a thank you. Errands. For, hey, thank you for checking in. We really appreciate we it. Do, yeah. Yeah, we do. We were asking about you earlier, Charlotte. Keep in mind, too, um, that um, I think Dungeon Delver tomorrow is going to have Errol Otis on. The artist? The artist. The artist of the uh, Right Behind You. Yeah, um, yeah the oh, legendary. Really? Yeah, so uh, go to Dungeon Delver tomorrow. I think maybe it's, uh, yeah, let me see here, 7 p.m. Uh, I think that's Eastern time. Um, or maybe I don't know. Uh, maybe that's Central Time. I don't know. Check it out on his channel. It's the Dungeon Delver. You guys know him. Um, good channel. Um, so yeah, check out. Uh, he's gonna have Arrow Lotus. So that should be uh, that should be pretty well received, I think. Um, uh, maybe we can just kind of play ourselves out by uh by looking at a D and I think the uh I think the live plays I'm gonna go after are just the D and D Beyond ones. Just because I don't know, I'm I don't I, I don't want to I don't want to make fun of like just ra random people. But um, uh, JP is telling you I don't know if this is relevant. Errol Earl Earl Earl, Earl Lotus. Okay, yeah, Earl Lotus. We'll kind of uh, just kind of like Earl yeah. Earl Lotus. Yep, <laughs> Mister Otis. <laughs> yeah. Errol was into Earl was into funny uh, spellings before it was cool. My baby's name is Famale. <laughs> <laughs> like when I worked name. at the data entry place, it was um, there were two things there. First off, it employed like maybe at the at its peak, maybe like eight hundred people, and this was before you could fill out credit card applications online. You'd have to mail them in. Well, I was the guy that typed them out and put them into the computer. Mm -hmm. We also had a call center, but I was it hardly any males worked there. So I was already a minority for that. Then when you took into the 10 males or 20 that worked there, there was only a handful of white guys that worked there. Mm -hmm. So I was like extra. Yeah, you were like a unicorn. Yeah. But there was a woman that worked there. And her name spelled L E M O N J E L L O. <laughs> and it was Lemon Jello. <laughs> However, her she pronounced it Lemangela. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? That's a true story. <laughs> it is. I yeah, yeah, I remember that. I I L E M O N J E L O Your name's Lemon Jello. Oh, it's oh, Lemangela. As you guys know, Mrs. D is a teacher. Yeah, she has. She's got stories too. Stories for, too. Yeah, uh, just yeah. Just, parents getting creative with their kids' name—it it never ends well. Um, 
you know what? Just uh, just go back to the Bible. And it's just odd pick because one people, from the people get so mad at the kid. They didn't name themselves. Yeah, it's like they didn't. Yeah, she, she didn't name herself. Like that f- basketball player that I know that you've heard of. And, you know, I don't think Rogan has, but there's that basketball player named God. God, yeah, God, Sham God. God, yeah. Well, he tried to change his name, but he didn't have, he was a college student. And he didn't have the money to change his name. So he had to go by God. <laughs> why why curse your child like that why why you know why set them up because it's all about the parent but and last thing about last thing about god sham god he's actually the one that taught kobe Bryant and alan iverson how to cross over dribble so you can go look that up that's those are facts yep that's the facts. yeah <laughs> this is battle for beyond what do you guys think the race what do you think the racial makeup of this game is going to be? I, I, this is the intro. Well, it sounds Asian. Ah. That orange, yellow, and Lamangela reminds me of that Eddie Murphy in that movie, Monique and Unique. <laughs> 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 What's in it for me? Oh my God, that is a blast from the past, Lamangelo. Like I remember, just I just remember at the time, like you mean like lemon jello? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's Lamangelo. <laughs> seen those planets fly by? Has anybody ever seen that? thing from nasa that they put out and it is if all the planets were as close to us as the moon is as how what they would look like in our sky oh wow that would be cool i'm a sucker for that it's crazy like i haven't seen that it jupiter and and uh saturn it's all you'd see uh, in uranus (laughs) Uh, (laughs) those are humongous planets Uh, so they literally took up like the whole sky it was crazy. I didn't want to laugh at that, but I had. To. I know, not you know. I'm not, and I'm not going to be like Uranus. It's Uranus. In many, many, in many, many millions of years, uh, the I think we'll be get, getting closer to Andromeda, right? So you'll, yes, those people. If they're <laughs> in theory, they will. The in the year twenty five, twenty five, if man is still alive, um, you will be able to look in the night sky and it will be dominated by another galaxy. Wow. How's that? Production value. Are we going to get, you going to get a warning from this one? I may, I don't care. (laughs) They'll just do a, they'll just do a a claim, not a strike. I got claimed by the uh, FCC. Welcome. To the battle hope. for beyond <laughs> the contest that resides at the end of time where whole civilizations come crumbling into the infinite sea of time and the glint of gold holds no value warriors witches and wise men come here traversing dizzying distances and ignoring the limitations of their own planes to come here and prove their worth in the most clandestine of contests the rules are as murky as the dark sky surrounding Polacote, the realm that hosts the contest. But the prize is worth risking everything for. The chance to change one thing from your past, to turn back one page in the book of your life, in the book of time, and rewrite it anew. The str- <laughs> what is going on? What? Did you guys just follow any of that? No. I, I just want gold. <laughs> She's just reading like... I guess I got to start doing this. I'll just uh, just type up this eloquent bunch of nonsense. You can taste words. the honey on your tongue. <laughs> uh, Double D, like this coming Friday here. Can we come? I, can I come an hour early and I can like with some markers do some patterns on your palms? Yeah, yeah. Play. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this brother's like well, I didn't hear this white. This this bitch be crazy. What the hell? BBC bitches be yeah, crazy. Bitches be crazy. Jesus. I don't blame you, brother. I'm with you. Strongest men carrying burdens so large still balk at the thought of regret. The heaviest burden of them all. Looks like a, like a long lost relative of like Rosario Dawson. Yeah, I can see that. For truly nothing can haunt a person's footsteps worse than the ghost of the past. 
it seduces us it's with what Rosario's could have been. Dawson's third cousin. Yeah. What is she talking about? This is like, there's some kind of contest where I think you get to change one. The thing. girl, the blonde on the top is like, what am I doing here? Yep. The guy <laughs> on the D. bottom right now, the, your perfect pause right there, Double D. He's, he's thinking, what the fuck am I doing? He's like, what did I get myself into? And why is that shit? emblem D&D &D Beyond on the top of the state of Indiana? Like, what is that? Yeah. It looks like Indiana to me. Oh, in the bottom left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does, actually. It must be a banner of some kind, I'm thinking. Yeah. We must have gotten a light uh, turnout. I think it, if you want, saw that intro, you'd think there's like seven players in this game. Like three of them showed up. The rest are all NPCs. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, not a white guy to be seen. Thank heavens. Because uh, who needs that, right? Brian James wants That's to cool. know if this is The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Bachelorette number two. What would you do on our date? Yes. Yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bleakers <laughs> usually got all the all the zippy one liners. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He could have been. And yet today I have assembled three adventurers who have not only decided that this is a challenge, this is a journey they want to embark upon. You're talking too much. You're the DM. You shouldn't be talking this much. I'm sorry. Should be even even in this little intro. There should be a little back and forth. Uh, even if you you do have some stuff to unpack, you don't need to just regurgitate it blah, like this. I mean, I know she's doing it for the audience, but oh my god. But one that they fully intend to win. I'm Jasmine, that bronze girl, Bular, and it is my divine pleasure to welcome these stellar players to my table. Let's meet them now. Hi, I'm Emma Fife. I am a gaming content producer at Fandom, who you might know from lots of other things on the internet, and I'm ready to roll some dice. What? what was that supposed, mean by that? That supposed to mean? <laughs> chat, right, help, chat, chat yeah, help us out. Only going fans. Yeah, going to overdrive. Yep. Let's. I want. Who uh, is this girl? Things. Can you uh, rewind? Double D. Can you please rewind it and pause it at like three fifteen so we can get her name real quick because we might have missed it. To win, I'm Jasmine, that bronze girl, Bular, and it is my divine pleasure to welcome these stellar players to my table. Let's meet them now. Hi, I'm Emma Fife. Okay, double, okay, thank you, Double D. Emma All right, I am Emma a Fife. gaming content producer at Fandom, who you might know from lots of other things on the internet. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I did not expect this. That's not what I expected either. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is the D and D. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Diovan. Um, she's got a site on the dark web. Yeah, like that that was a little too like wink wink nudge nudge. Like there there was no subtlety to that at all. This is the D D official channel. This that is was, D, &D Beyond yeah, Official Channel. This was a challenge. Let's, let's let's find her content. Oh my god. Yeah, she got the pronouns, but um she may have the uh the other pronoun. <laughs> o O F. <laughs> and I'm ready to roll some dice digitally. Hi, I'm Erica Ishii. I'm an actor, and you might know me from the internet or from one of many video games. Hey, how's it going? It's Ify Wadiway, comedian, actor, and professional nerd. Here to roll some dice. And dice we shall roll. Ooh. So, <laughs> you are not... Dice we shall roll as we peck away on our computers. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled before I came over today, and I... <laughs> I, I, I rolled a bunch of 20s, which yeah. is tradition. I have a list of uh, dice rolls that I made. D wasn't it? Didn't Tin Can Chris do that? That like, we're not making that up. Like, no, I think can. double Tin Can I, Chris I think that's did where that. it came from. That is exactly really, where it came from. She has a place for that for certain things. Like if a DM doesn't want to give away something like, hey, guys, I'm going to have you do this. I'm going to write down what you're doing. You but, OK, that's fine. Double D. It's but. different from me saying, or Gavin saying, I, I, I from three to three fifteen, I ro just rolled a bunch of, I rolled up a bunch of characters. I have three guys with, you know, eighteen double zero strength. I also rolled a bunch of die twenties, and I rolled three criticals in a row. 
Uh, yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed the in life. the live play, I was watching some of it, and I think it might be in Mouse Cam when it was farther away. Yeah, when it was farther away from the action, my box, my dice box, is in on in the yeah. camera, and I pointed to Mrs. Double D when I jumped off and Ramboed that guy that was on tour locks mm -hmm. i rolled that 20 yeah and then we rolled initiative and i rolled an, another 20 on that so i had back to back 20s back to and i said to mrs double d i'm so i'm gonna roll one more time and see what's up 19 19 oh. so i don't know if that part is on camera it might i be. heard you talking about it yeah um, I, and i just said to mrs double d that was a 20 20 19. was it third edition where you had to confirm the critical uh yeah yeah, you you yeah, you had to confirm the critical and then like our house roll was 2020 20 was instant death. 2020 hit was an instant death, not 2020 20. Oh yeah, 2020, 2020 hit. 2020. So hit. I was the beneficiary of that once and I the felt victim. that once. Yeah, you, I killed the Farc the troll with a 2020 hit and then actually that's how Kez died as well too. Yep. Yeah, the cosmic scales yeah. uh, were were back in balance yep. unfortunately. Yeah. You are all adventurers, heroes in your own right. You know the business end of a sword, or in your case, the business end of your focus. And you've spent your lives trying to find this strange contest that you've only heard of in hushed whispers in the back of shady taverns. <laughs> it's like Fight Club or something. <laughs> Travis is confirming it. The role is on the video. Thank you, Travis. And thank you for also watching. Ah, nice. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. You guys who are, <laughs> you guys are the real hardcores who, uh, who sit through, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't sit through every minute, but if you do, God bless you. You can yeah. bleep out all the parts from now on. We can just edit out the parts with Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, if oh, you're, why would we want to do Gavin, that? if you're listening, yeah, please yeah, let, us, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say it's a long. I'm going to try to do a little bit more editing, maybe get it down to a little bit more digestible. I think the the the, the length is just keeping some people off. I don't know. It's like the, this one came in at just under four hours, and I'm like, Ooh. we also had it. It was four hours, double D, but it and that is long. It was extra long. But in fairness, we played till one yeah. thirty in the morning. Yeah, it was, and that's only because I wanted to get the encounter a natural stopping point, yeah. and it just took a while yeah. for it to happen. So yeah, I was thinking today of. We'll we'll get to this video, but I was thinking of, <laughs> it's not important. Yet. No, I was thinking today of Gavin, and like we miss him on the show. He just like I don't know. He's not as engaged, but and that's fine. But I was thinking of what his worst day could possibly be, and I came up with <laughs> oh, no. a layover in Philadelphia, and on the plane next to him is Sandra Bullock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because he hates Philadelphia and all things Philadelphia. Yeah. And he absolutely is secretly in love with Sandra Bullock. Although yeah. kind of like when you're a little kid, you like yeah. throw sand at her yeah. in the sandbox. That's yeah. how Gavin feels about America's Sandra sweetheart. Bullock. Oh, I know. We love her. <laughs> yeah, it's well put. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. From wenches that you probably don't want to be seen in public with. But here we are. For you. You found a tale of a staff, a void staff, something capable of capturing and channeling that which darkens our soul the most, pure evil, capable of, of turning. This chick's in love with the sound of her own voice, that's for sure. Being a bad, bad man good and potential. She's Indian. I thought maybe by, the, by her name, which I can't remember right now, I think she might be. Yeah, I think she might be Americanized. Very pretty, I must say. She is. Very pretty. She does look like Rosario Dawson, like mm -hmm. a little bit. She also has a little bit of Mariska Hargitay in her, a little bit. I don't know who that is. From SVU? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch SVU. She's still a very pretty lady. Um, Let's see. She's famous. Isn't she Jane Manfield's yes. daughter? Yeah. yeah. Jane Mansfield? Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh wow! Now I got to now I got to Mariska Hargitay. Yeah, she was won like multiple awards for her. Yeah, maybe if I saw her, I'd know. Yeah, she was on SVU. Um, okay. 
the one about like predator child right. predators and stuff like that. Well, Jane Mansfield, man, that was a yeah, that's Jane lady. Mansfield's daughter. Yes, yes, she is. Yeah, that was a lady. Good man, evil. You set out in search of the staff, and as soon as your hand touched it, you found yourself at the contest. And here you sit now with this same staff in hand in the armory. There are warriors all around you, some of them seated on these beautifully lacquered benches, preparing themselves for battle. And you reflect on the past three days, which have been a blur. <laughs> do, I, do I get to speak here? <laughs> is this, uh, is this, this like woman going to talk for me the whole time? Am I getting paid for this? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just a paycheck. It's just a paycheck. And so you attack these guys. Don't no, I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll. I'll make your rolls for you. It's like, I already rolled them for you. you I already, already rolled them. Yeah, you, you missed. Yeah, you did. It's like traveler. You died. Uh, sorry. It's, before you said one word in character, your guy is dead. You don't even remember exactly how you got here. Just that at one time you were in your own plane and then you shifted here. As soon as you arrived, you saw around you almost like the fabric of time and space ripped open, giving you glimpses into shattered reality. This is, this is the perils of doing these kind of shows for an audience, like with, you know, like production, instead of being like talking to your players and like, okay, you know, let, let's, let's talk about this. You know, you, you're here. Do you actually want to do anything here? You know, the, the, these could, these encounters could be beefed up a little. I guess I, I do sort of understand the need to like, okay, we're doing this for consumption, but this isn't like playing. This is like this is theater. You know who I want to see DM a live live play like this? Christopher Walken. <laughs> you think? You think? Antonio, I think Double D's answered answering your question now, so I'm gonna get rid of that. He asked if we would ever do something like this, and there's an episode of The Big Bang Theory where they're doing Dungeons and Dragons and. I don't know the actor's name, but he's the one that plays Wallowitz, who in real life is a very good impressionist. And he does a phenomenal Nicolas Cage and Christopher Walken. And he does do Christopher Walken yes. in that scene. I've seen that. Oh, he's maybe a dragon in the I know he did the impression. Yeah. Yeah. But he does he does an Indian the Kuther Polly. He does his voice because he left the game and he does kick in with some other celebrity impressions in that and it's not an episode with um i'm drawing a blank on his name the guy from will wheaton will wheaton is not in this episode it is just a straight the, the, I, have, the uh, I have been big bang free in my life i have uh, i've been marked safe uh, from big i've bang never watched an episode big bang <laughs> never bothered me yeah no you you were always kind of yeah, like never it's, it's good. I, and I understand that like yeah. it, it had to have some appeal it was on for like how long but yeah, it's uh Surly is agreeing with you, Rogan. He'd play if Christopher yes. Walken DM'd. Yes. It's remember back in the eighties, everybody had like a Jack Nicholson impression. impression. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there was a time I think where everybody had a uh, a Christopher Walken impression. The only Christopher Walken line I remember was from the Dead Zone. Do you remember that movie? Um, yeah, it's like a Stephen why. King. He yes. could like see the future or something like that. I just remember at the end, like the kids were going to go out on a pond in the winter, and he could see that they were gonna, the the ice was going to crack. And he just I just remember his one line was, they they wouldn't believe him, and he's like, the ice is going to break. <laughs> Kevin Spacey does a good Christopher Walken. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Please, all floating in the cosmos and the arena centered in all of them. You were ushered to beautiful quarters, given pretty good accommodations, not as good as the upstairs, but downstairs, you know. Uh, it's just a bunch of games. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, more games. Yeah, it's like, more competition. You, at this point, she went way violated the whole situation. You, you, you know, you're talking. You're not letting anyone engage. You're not. No one rolled yep. the dice. Yep. No one's uttered a syllable. Shame. Why not just say like, here's what you have. You're in this room. You're together. You know, you. This is how you got here. Let them. Let them go. Right. And if they need to be like, hey, how did I get this? Just turn to the DM and the DM will be like, oh, well, you would have gotten that from so and so. You know. Sorry, audience. You know, we're we're kind of uh, picking up on the go here, so we got to kind of do this kind of stuff. 
Instead, you're just watching this girl, you know, do her little uh, soliloquy. She gets paid it's by the fine, though. It'll do. Yeah, by the word. And here you prepare yourself. Kobenheiser your agrees. Battle. Sitting across from you is a young woman. She looks you up and down. Yep. What does she see? Well, she sees... Finally. An older gentleman. Uh, he's, he's, very, he's much older, but he there is a strength around him. He is very strong. He is very muscular. Yet, he's dressed like that of a wizard. He has lots of scars across his body from past battles and fights, but he holds on to his staff, his spell book, and his belongings. It seems like almost as if it's a barbarian cosplaying as a wizard. <laughs> the staff itself clings to your hand a bit. Only fans is liking that. Yeah. She's like, I'll, I'll cling. That staff will be clinging to my fingers. Uh... Later on. It feels cold to the touch. The length of the quarter staff is this dark obsidian. And at- why it gotta be obsidian. <laughs> yeah. Well, where's 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 the X card He's, at? Yeah, where's the X card at? Come on. As you sit here looking at it, you notice the top of it is a clouded quartz. If you stare too closely, you find yourself kind of falling away into it as the colors kind of pulse and the shadow almost seems to form a face and reach out to you and then disappear back into the recesses of the crystal. So if that's an important game thing, she's she's putting it in too early. Um, you shouldn't be putting that kind of stuff in, even if you're going to go with this kind of storytelling game. For God's sakes, th- these girls haven't even said a word yet. They haven't had a word said about them yet, other than to introduce the actual actors. But he, this this guy's already getting fed like story stuff, you know, like tip, you know, tips like stuff that's going to yes. come into play later. And it's like, God, just get everybody together. At least give them a chance to interact, even, you know, if they choose to or not. You're still not sure what the full capabilities of the staff are, oh although I'm, I don't know. Have you experimented God. with it at all yet? I've... People pay for this, by the way. P- people really? think people think that's good DMing. I guess people just want to be talked to like that because it's it's the whole Matt Mercer effect, I guess. But I mean, Matt, I think Matt Mercer allows his people to yeah to yeah. talk. <laughs> um, I've researched, I've looked up and down, and I was hoping that this would give me some kind of answers. I mean, by this point was sure that I'm getting up there in age and there was no way to make it to the so-called battle of the beyond so I was going to see if I can turn back time itself myself if I could turn back time if I could find a way yes yes uh, riveting you got me singing share yeah she she has an under the under the desk cam, <laughs> peeper cam. Well, it was your ticket. That now you found yourself at the competition, seated across from a young woman, not so young though, and very ornately dressed, fine scale male. She has beautifully coiffed hair and a headband and sort of a sweet. <laughs> vacant look on her face not so perhaps in tune with everything that's going on around her as if as if she's just mentally maybe somewhere else she's a quirky nerd <laughs> just like me Kobenizer, if you're jetting have a great night oh boy have we're losing them have a good one Kobenizer. we're losing them sorry guys well they're all gonna they're gonna look up her only fans <laughs> Maybe exactly. they already did. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> the hell? It is in this kind of sort of spaced out uh, state you're in uh, when the girl that was uh, before kind of appraising Econ now uh, touches you on the shoulder and inquires about a gauntlet that rests in your lap. For you too went in search of, an, of a relic that you had only heard of. Um, you haven't tried it on yet, but in your lap sits a, almost as though made of bone, uh, 
shined to perfection white scale mail glove. It's almost looks like it's too large for your hand and each finger ends in what looks to be like a claw-esque structure. To the touch, it feels... You talked way too much, sister. Shit, uh, good really, lord. Holy moly. People who are... People think this is good DMing to describe all of this stuff in excruciating detail. It's rehearsed. I mean, if you hit her with like something on the spur of the moment, I don't know. Cut to commercial. It, yeah. It, it, uh, God, just, does not compute. Burr, burr, burr. Yeah, you, you know, you, bone doesn't shine. You polish bone. You, it's polished bone. All right. Metal shines. <laughs> yeah. Jeez Louise, lady. How about just getting to the action yeah like you got some gear all right guys you know you're in here and you finally meet someone in game not not your humble narrator you actually meet someone you can interact with your portal into the world oh my god this is like if she wants to talk then she should portray npcs we should you know, we should be you know getting a, a background and understanding of what it's actually going on through the through the words of the npcs so At co worst. coming up on 10 minutes, and I think she's spoken for like nine and a half of them. Scintillates with energy, almost like your hands have fallen asleep or gone numb temporarily. Don't worry, guys. We will stop in the next uh, 10 or 15. Yeah, but uh, oh, see it through a little bit here. This glove is so pretty, but I don't have long claws, so I didn't think it would fit me properly. You Do you look up at who asks you the question? Yes. Yeah, before you stands a tiefling. She has bright, of course, bright eyes and lilac skin. She wears gilded gold armor, and she says, "Hi, I'm Serenda." Serenda. <laughs> Serenda. Right. I surrender. Serenda. I surrender. <laughs> she she must be French. Womp, 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 womp. Sorry, Max. Didn't mean that. My name is Lenore. So nice to meet it's you. It's nice to meet Lenore. you too. It's so great to see like female representation here. All right. Flag out of play. X card. <laughs> we need our version of the X card. I don't know. It's like, like a card with a dick on it or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a crude drawing of a yeah, wang. You know, yeah, we gotta put yeah that's our that's gotta be our version. <laughs> I'm pulling out my junk card. <laughs> Yeah, my junk car. Yeah, oh, I I think we could sell this uh, crazy mouse. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on a we'll roll this afterward. This on a rolling cart at, at Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's maximum. Boy, we thought we were gonna get chased out with the sandwiches and T-shirts. Security, man, man. security. And they're gonna be coming after us with pitchforks and uh, daggers, foam swords. Yeah, it's just a card with a rooster on it. <laughs> that's what yeah. Travis says. <laughs> on one side yeah so this is this is what uh, the the people who make D&D &D think that this is a very good representation of demonstrating their product if you look at it like that this is what you get and honestly it is a perfect representation of their product because that's what D&D &D is nowadays tiefling girls girl power representation there's no, there's not one white guy to be found he's probably running the camera because uh, maybe we can hear some buzzwords like problematic um, let's let's delve a little deeper oh yes you know it's just great us girls gotta stick together i, I hope we're on the same team i think like the for the first group they're sending people up together but i'm not exactly sure yet okay you should try it on though because the nails on that thing are fierce but i don't have long nails like that so i don't think my that i can fit into the nails on the glove. Oh, it'll fit, honey. You have the room. It'll fit. It'll fit. You're you're going to put this glove on. <laughs> In other words, you you were you were being railroaded. Oh, bless your heart. She just like taps you on the shoulder. But if if you think that it might suit me, I I suppose. Just put the fucking glove on. Yeah, Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> Shit. You're not OJ Simpson here. Jeez. Just, you know. oh. Suppose I could give it a try. I mean, it, it matches what you're wearing. <laughs> you just you just saw a railroad in live and in person. 
she should have said, like, fine, you don't want the gloves, bitch? I'll give them to somebody else. Right. And she, These she, are plus five vorpals. Yeah. She turns tail and walks out of the room. Make this chick beg her now. I'll do anything for those gloves. Oh, she turns. You'll do anything? Good. Good. See there, you just got some double D uh, DMing. That did sound like the NPC was sitting on the on the OnlyFans girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my lord! Let's continue. And that's okay. Let's, yeah, well, I, I would too if I was there, but the, they'd call the police. Spring. It does look nice with my outfit. Okay, and I'm gonna slide my hand into the mm-hmm. gauntlet. As you slide your hand in. You feel like a thum of energy as this relic you're carrying attunes to you. Mm. Um, this gauntlet that was your ticket to this the contest. The Asian girl's getting frustrated. Did you just see that? I suppose I could give it a try. I mean, it, it matches what you're wearing. It does look nice with my outfit. Okay, and I'm gonna slide my hand into the mm-hmm. gauntlet. As you slide your hand in, you feel like a thum of energy thum? as this thum. relic you're carrying attunes to you. Mm. Um, this gauntlet that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. This contest. The only real one there is the one that hasn't broken yet. She's like, this white chick's getting magic items. She's like, I haven't even been talked to. She's like, I got I got to say I'm, I'm Susie Wong, and that's it. I'm going to end up with a set of chopsticks. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh, but you can put them in your hair. <laughs> they're, they're super cool. In a box of Calgon. <laughs> Ancient Ain't Chinese secret, secret, huh? <laughs> it occurs to you that now it might be your ticket to winning it. Um, you're still not sure of the extents of the magic of this item, but uh, you think you think it could wall up someone. You think it could pack a punch. <laughs> Jeez. So uh, you're playing this game that obviously everybody wants to win. So so why are these people getting buffed up? Is has there been any explanation of this? And what's the price? Yeah. What's the, they're showing up and they're giving these you know obviously yeah they only have, I'm not even touching the, the the tip of what their powers are, are possibly are. What's the price? There's always a price. There's always a price. Travis went triple X on us. Mm, Travis, Ooh. ouch! Yes, let's uh, ship. Oh, geez, you're gonna put it up there twice. Yeah, you're gonna gonna get me demonetized on this one. Charlotte, I love it. I don't think that gauntlet is the only thing she's slitting <laughs> to giving her True things story. on the things on the internet. Have we confirmed? Has anybody confirmed that? Does this chick have an OF? No one's confirmed it. Just a lot of speculations. Well, we're just, whoever's found it. We're down to them. yeah. We're, through attrition, we're down to about half our uh, our normal uh, running running uh, crew. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, you, you don't have to spend any money to find out if she's. Uh... That is a good freeze frame there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like the uh, when Janine was on that album cover for. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Wasn't Blink one eighty two. Yeah, was a nurse with like a rubber glove. Yep, Blink one eighty two. Right. Sorenda looks over at you, Econ, and she says, um, I think I surrender to you. Hey, 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 we should maybe form an alliance and team up. Team up. Huh? Wait, who's Sorenda? Yeah. Sorenda is that NPC that gave her the glove. Oh, the uh, the tiefling. Okay. I thought she was speaking. I thought she was speaking for the blonde. I'm like, <laughs> she, she could just ask, you know. All right. I, I, I see. <coughs> So the tea, the tiefling is just distributing gifts. I guess so. What, what, what do you do? What do you know? What would what you do? Special? What would you do? My pack I of mean am punch. A master archer. An archer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I'm really excited to. So, like, the first is this your guys' first time here? Yes. It looks like she wiped her butt. Oh, that's butt precious. I love that. Hand. Wait, she you've been to... here before? It's very distracting. Well, I've, I've tried this before. Because oh. it's on the inside of her hand, too. Yes. She's asking them for a three-way. Mm-hmm. 
11 minutes in, I I, I want to see that Asian chick's face now. She's probably starting to get steamed a little. It's like, why am I even here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't. And at this, you see a woman in the corner folding towels. Um, doing laundry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's doing laundry. Dude, dude, my bingo card is full. <laughs> See, the Asian woman did for her. The Asian woman is happy she's included, but the blonde girl right now is like, Did you just say that? that? Did you just say that? Oh my gosh. We need more Calgon. Ancient Chinese secret, huh? (laughs) Chinese laundry. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Yes, Travis. No way. Yep. I guess they, uh, they're they jumping in the boat tonight, fellas and ladies. <laughs> Layla, what do our what do our heroes see? In the corner, uh, quietly folding towels and, and listening <laughs> in to the conversation is a radiant, glowing human, uh, well, humanoid character. <laughs> uh, dark hair, almost seems to be b- blowing from an unseen fan. Uh <laughs> And uh, they finish up folding the towels, and <laughs> then I get out my iron and uh, get ready to do the next. And I make some egg fried rice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> get some chop suey ready. Uh, <laughs> jeez, shame on you, D and D Beyond. <laughs> you had to know, didn't you? It's an odd thing, isn't it? There's there's a lot of things you could be doing like for uh you know for for blocking or you know whatever you know your character is just kind of doing to pass time. <laughs> is this not fortifying a stereotype which is wrong? Uh, shrimp fly, yeah. shrimp fly lice. <laughs> Maliki, a troublemaker. Just- My husband's some hot shot. <laughs> Brian James, we quote that commercial realistically once a year maybe yeah go over to um it's it's on youtube and uh, you'll it's the one with like all the views and uh what you'll find is um you'll find the daughter of the woman in that commercial she must you know patrol that a little bit her her mom has passed away the you know the lady in the commercial but she's like i remember she made this one post like hey that's my mother in there you know this is who she was you know she was a stage actress well all this you're very proud and, um, you know, I think it was cool because everybody was kind of saying, like, it's a shame that people think that commercials like politically in- incorrect because, um, I mean, the the joke is on the customer, you know, that they're in the the couple is in on it. You know, it's yeah, almost like right. we're, we're trying to scam these dumb Americans. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like if, if you think about it, like they're the ones that are, you know, and it's also charge. bagging on the male character. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. The American yeah, yeah, Charlie, like, you know. yeah, she comes out to embarrass him a little bit, and right. you know, he, it's it's a fun commercial. It's a it's an it's a classic commercial. It's why maybe late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's it's simple. Simplicity is the essence of good design. It it is overall it's simple. It's not yeah. overly wordy. There's not a whole lot of dialogue. Yep. You know. It, it's a real honest an honest classic little skit we liked in the other commercials we liked as a group is the low and brow ones tonight is kind of special <laughs> i made the pass i stole the ball <laughs> <laughs> i like those low and brow commercials too i like strohs too now we're talking strohs now so we're talking when, when i was in high school we had an inner mural basketball team and um our team name was shorts because it was stroh's spelled backwards ooh, ooh. there you go yeah, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> then the next year we were and i don't know how it would be pronounced but here's how we pronounce it Rezaweeba dub because it was Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> dub. So Didn't quite work the same way as uh, Stroh's did. Uh, no, like, but the, sh- one. the shorts one was perfect because yeah. no one knew yeah. except for our group. And the Rezaweeba dub was just pushing the envelope. Yeah, everybody was like, what, what's what the matter? hell is that? that? Dumb dumbs. It's retarded. What's going on here? We failed spelling. Walk over. They glitter as they walk. Um, hello? I'm, um, Layla, you must be the newest contestants. I mean, 
I I hope so. I got a shirt that needs pressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long do you usually take? Uh, and what are your rates? This guy got a new glove. Can you do something with this? Steam it. Yeah. Well, do you think it looks Terry nice Tate, on me? office linebacker. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, I think this is how I got here. And you? Uh, yes, I, I guess uh, this quarter staff is uh, how I ended up here with everyone. Uh, so, yes. Uh, He's talking like the, uh, like in Gladiator. Remember his ally? Yes. Right. You know, the, the black guy there. Or um, he, he kind of delved into the, um, the separatist guy in um oh, what the hell what the hell is that rogue one you remember oh yeah. yes <laughs> yeah what's it what's his name I can't forrest remember. whitaker yeah forrest whitaker yeah yep. he was kind of talking like forrest yes. whitaker there a little bit what do you do forrest whitaker he he played jefferson right and they thought they only flew him in for games for the <laughs> in fast times at ridgemont high <laughs> yeah god oh yeah I, for, I i keep forgetting he was in there. isn't that isn't that movie um isn't there not seven different actors, but didn't seven Oscars come out from oh. actors in that movie? Like Forrest yeah. Whitaker, yeah. Nicholas yeah, Cage, sure. and Jennifer sure. Jason Lee won a Golden Globe later on in her career. And, and in the end of the Oscar, right? Who? Jennifer Jason Lee won an Oscar for sure. Yeah. Uh, if, yes. It's, yeah, it's sure. just in Cameron Crowe. Like it's yep. filled with like, right. uh, if you ever want to, that's a good movie. It's, it's a very a good, good yeah. coming of it. And of course, uh, the one of the most rewatched scenes in movie history yeah. is Phoebe Cates getting out of the pool. Sean Penn, Sean yeah. Penn, was, you know, how oh, many, Oscar winner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was such a great, such a great movie. Now we're talking strows, <laughs> shorts. Now we're talking beer. Now we're talking good times. Strows is smoking here. Smoking here. That's it. It's going to be an earworm in my uh, in my mind. And you're trying again. I'm trying again. How wonderful! I know. I was gonna I was gonna tell them that like you were the one that encouraged me to try this a second time. Absolutely. You get next year. Or, I think or, so. Or even the year after that. Or even maybe like help maybe this year. <laughs> you know, because everyone back home says <laughs> I'm a a a big fish in a small pond, but I want to prove to them that I'm a a shark in the ocean. Means- hmm? That didn't quite track, did it? Oh. <laughs> I, didn't quite get that. No, I, Sorry, that, I, I think you paused it perfectly. That blonde is like, what? <laughs> Whoa, what? <laughs> huh? yeah. I'll give her a pass on that. Every run DM away, has away. found themselves, uh, you know, like Wiley e. Coyote. You know, they, they start a sentence and all of a sudden they realize there's there's no ground under them. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give her a little. Asian ladies thinking, all right, this is my opportunity to shine. Nope. Yeah, nope. I'm just gonna just gonna hog it with my pet NPC here. How much do you think her NPC ends up winning this thing? <laughs> so thanks for participating, guys. You helped me win. You gotta keep moving. Yeah. Always keep moving. Yeah, because if because sharks die if they stop. <laughs> you don't look like a fish to me. Maliki, what are the two Star Wars movies besides Rogue One? What's the other one are you thinking of? Two good Star Wars movies, and neither of them was. I agree, Rogue One was phenomenal. What was the other one? The original, right? Well, there was a sequel to the original hero like sequel. And neither of them was a sequel. The two good ones. Oh, neither was a sequel. Oh, did no, we're talking Disney. Disney, Disney. Okay. Um, So what would be the other movie or Rogue? Star Wars, good Star Wars movies. Rogue One is obviously going to be one of them. Um, is he talking about Force, Solo? Force Awakens? Or you a Solo guy, Maliki? Rogue One and Solo. He said Solo. There it is Solo. right there. Yeah, Solo wasn't terrible. Um, they kind of teased Darth Maul in that. Oh, no, yeah, end. he's in No, he's in it. Yeah, he's, he's in it. Um, but... I, I didn't like the uh, the teenage girl, you know, that she comes up and, you know, I don't know, just they, kind, of, kind of scolds everybody. I, I could kind of overlook which that. One? In Solo? In Solo, what, yeah. I remember she girl. was like one of the one of the trash people. What am I thinking of here? I don't know. It's, it, I, I saw that movie once when it came out. So we're talking like what? Five, Daenerys Targaryen was in that. All right. And so was Woody. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and he, he was he. That's one of the reasons it was good. Is uh, Woody? Woody's good in everything. But here's a movie about Han Solo, right? Young Han Solo, right? And he meets Chewbacca in this movie, right? Uh-huh. But they don't just they don't have nothing to do with the life debt. They don't like that. That's always been a thing with Han Solo mm-hmm. and Chewbacca, you know. And they never touch on that. What a what a what a big miss. Yeah, they just met in prison in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You he... know, what, what the huge miss? Here's you know. Here's always been a bit of point of conversation. When I was a kid, like, all right, here's this Han Solo. He's got this buddy, Chewbacca. Oh, the background on that. Yeah, you know, he saves his life, you know. Antonio, you just mentioned here about Star Wars anniversary. The other day, uh, or maybe like two weeks ago, because I was off last week, I made the comment that we are Star Wars to its trilogy sequel is now like farther away from the last one to now right if i explain that right yeah from the phantom menace till now is longer than the original star wars to phantom menace yeah yeah crazy crazy how time jumps up on you like that i got news for you you uh younger folks out there um, probably not too many in my audience, but uh, yeah, if you're in your 20s, enjoy it because uh, you'll turn around one day and be like, man, that went quick. <laughs> I used to be good looking. Now I look in the mirror and <laughs> who is this? What are you, Rodney what Danger? This? What are you going, yeah. Rodney Dangerfield yeah. on us now? Who is this a slab of uh, fat and trying staring back at me? Body built by pudding. That's right. Bless and your heart. and Slim Jims in my case. She puts a hand on your shoulder again. <laughs> well, I'm Layla, and I'm uh, here to serve. To serve? Welcome. Oh, so you're not part of this contest? Oh, no. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. Why, 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 why would you not want to be a part of this contest? Because I do the laundry. <laughs> Soon to some, somebody's got to do it. Do you see this chain around my ankle? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's for my arthritic condition. <laughs> oh, I live here. I, I help out with the tournament oh. every year. It's a great fortune to get to meet so many adventurers and people from all over. Oh, yeah. so does everyone pay you? Is that why you have a great fortune? Money doesn't mean anything here. Oh. At least she's letting him talk. Uh, I'll, I'll give her credit. She's. Uh... So you have no desire to enter the contest? Mm-mm. No. Mm-hmm. It is a privilege just to be able to serve. Okay, you, you see. You... See, I, I think she's going to eventually join this, right? I mean, we, we all know right. that, right? This is where, you know, if you're a good player, you got you to gotta give him a little hook. Like, oh, me? <laughs> I couldn't possibly, but I have dared to dream right. sometime. Boy, I wouldn't, what would it be like? Uh, it'll never happen. Give him something. Don't just sit there and go, oh, no, no. I, uh, I, I, you know, I do the laundry. I, I, I can't, I couldn't, you know, no. Give him a little bit. Oh, to go back in time and change my fate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, lean into it a little bit. You are saying things like it is a privilege and servant, and it makes me think that uh, you may be conditioned to think that uh, you don't deserve to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she. it has to be because she needs to get the lecture of how she's being oppressed. That's right. That's. I think that's what's going on. The, the contest, and I think you deserve if there's something you want. <laughs> that's so sweet of you. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Nobody really ever inquires as to my role here who's making you serve then because if you're serving then you must serve a master yes the the one who runs this tournament the master of ceremonies the master of ceremonies the master of ceremonies well, yeah they they run like the whole thing you know? yes. People need, he needs employees to put a show on, right? Yeah. To put the games on. Yeah. Are they going to ask if she gets paid? What if she's like, yeah, I get paid. I get paid pretty well. <laughs> All I got to do is fold laundry. <laughs> Good benefits. Health insurance. Even got dental. 401k. 401k. <laughs> 
I get three weeks off when we're out of uh, game season. You know, can't take any time off during it. But you know, and as she says this, the tiefling uh, is pulled away by uh, a, an individual in like a maroon cloak with uh, peacock feathers adorning the top of it. Um, they say, oh, we need you for a moment. And she says, oh, okay. Behind you, you hear, um, you're almost like a, a porthole, um, the sound of the audience kind of like shouting and sounds of battle happening in the, in the battlefield behind you or in the arena behind you. You can see glimpses of it um, from, from where you are in kind of like this armory slash gym room. Um, as Gym? Like gym? Like G-Y-M, did you mm -hmm. say? That's how I took it. Okay. So the tiefling is pulled away. Um, you see a small goblin approach you all. Uh, he's stoop-shouldered, and he has mutton chops and a presence that comes off him and waves from his bristly ponytail down to his lacquered red hobnail boots. His mm. widow peak points at you in an accusing fashion. As <laughs> God. Huh? Look at the blonde. Look at OnlyFans right now. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, this DM went to the uh, the school of. Uh, she took classes under Professor Connie Chang. Remember exactly. when she was doing that stuff? Like you know, just oh throw out make believes, yeah, right? <laughs> adjectives, adjectives and uh, descriptives. Us. His widow peak points accusingly. Really? What? How about his nose? No, not his nose. How about yeah. his face? No, not his face. No, his his widow's peak. It's so far removed from um, just what, what I would want to play. You know what they probably do in this world a lot of? Fly. <laughs> hey, all right. Uh, all right, we're gonna let you guys go. Um, that's uh, enough of this for tonight. Uh, I don't know if you want to watch uh, any more of it. Um, I don't know why, but go ahead. I don't know why you would, but uh, you know, I just that was, I just left was, you with a good one. Give me well, some credit was, there, huh? Yes. It drops the mic. Yep. Walks away. Kobenizer is probably like, oh, he had to do it. <laughs> he got he me had dead. to do it. All right, guys. Uh, three hours is long enough. Thanks um, for sticking around, crew. Yeah. yeah, you hardcores at the end. Absolutely. Thank you for sticking around. Thanks, as always, for all the uh, super chats, everybody. Thanks for the channel members. I saw Tora in here. Thank you so much, buddy. 2K. D Congratulations, Double D. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's very nice. And I, I remember, uh, you know, Ryan said like, yeah, you, there's plateaus, uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, actually, uh, would it would it surprise you to know that my channel's on a bit of a plateau right now? Yeah, it's uh, haven't I haven't like jumped. Um, I'm so used to these like regular like jumps. I'm like, oh, next one, you know, boom, it's gonna happen. But uh, you know, it's just kind of going slow and steady, which is just fine. I remember it was just in the winter when we celebrated the one cat. January. It was yeah. like January. So it took a thousand. So it seems like it's taken about what five months, right? Five months for every August, cat. September, October, November, December, and then January, February, March, April, May. So every five months. So every five. Hey, look, guys, if I can get Halloween, three K. If it's three K by the end of the year, I'll be floored. I wouldn't even expect that. Uh, but uh everyone Go out and tell a friend. Just like and subscribe. <laughs> get your parents, get your elderly parents to uh, like and subscribe to yeah. this uh, madman in the glasses. Nasorian, thank you so much. Um, we enjoy doing it. We're having a good yeah, time here. Absolutely. We're just three friends shooting the shit. You guys yep. are listening yep. in. We love it. Occasionally, we meet new friends like we did tonight, uh, yep. like Ryan David, who we found out is actually physically not very far from us at all. So right. uh, who knows? Maybe in the future, we Blaine, will... Uh, fix your microphone and get on. Blaine, yeah, get on, get on that <laughs> mic and uh, come in. Yeah, and if anybody else um, wants to pop in, um, you certainly can uh, when I open week. it up. Yeah, next, next week. Next week, Max. Summer gets, cra summer gets crazy. There'll be some scheduling that we'll have to work around right i mean you have a vacation we have a vacation yeah you have a vacation be, we'll work around it even if yeah you rogan, know we, me and rogan <laughs> always have an we have an out we always talk about going to this fancy um apartment complex yes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah getting closer to that yeah okay these guys are gonna move in uh, 
ditch ditch the dames and move in bachelor style yeah bosom buddies yeah yeah <laughs> thank you travis uh for for always being Absolutely. there Malachi, all you guys didn't see cal must have been i don't know did was cal in here tonight i didn't see uh we never did it in an official roll call yeah, um but, and that's my fault i i, no, no, I, I mentioned no. it and i didn't do it well it's you know when you we had a guest early on so sometimes we can do that sometimes uh Sometimes it may just uh, get the short shrift, but uh, you know we all love you. Good lord, combat Malachi, board games. Thank Malachi you. He is confirming that Cal was here and he left early. Yeah, yeah and that's okay. Cal, uh, Cal is always uh, dependable. He showed up. Travis is seconding it. Now it's Travis. definitely true. Yep. yep. It was great. A N N. Who I didn't see tonight though. I never saw Panther. No. No. Yeah, he he said he's been having trouble getting notifications and stuff. Well, he, he may he may be, there's a time yeah, there's, major yeah, time zone he difference. Be, yeah, he may. might be listening tomorrow. So if yeah. you are Panther, we missed you. Panther math is in full effect because I think we topped out at like 1.4 million tonight. <laughs> Charlotte, thanks for showing up eventually. Charlotte, tell Katie to we need the yeah. queens here earlier. Yep, he did. Yep, represent. Cobanizer, sorry if we uh, sorry if we uh, rubbed you the wrong way about the fly, but uh, we love you. You know that. Um, okay, guys. I think that's uh, that is all for tonight. You guys go out and uh, have a great rest of the night. And, you got anything uh, dropping soon? Oh, I'll, I'll work on something this uh, weekend. But still I have out on Monday. Dropping. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I might do is I might do a uh, paint stream. I got some. I finally got my. Um, from the commercial yeah and yeah. beardy uh, miniatures and i got them all primed and ready so i might do a uh i might do a little uh video, kind of just a chill like i did that one night i think i need to get the camera zoomed in which i think i can do what um are uh, and are you going to be a guest chilling. on anybody's show nice you got anything coming up for you i am not scheduled on anyone's show um that could change i'll let you guys know via twitter or yeah. uh the community uh, like I said, um, I got pundit coming on in a couple weeks. You know, we're 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 just trying to iron out, and I think he picked a day. It, it's in June. It's either in the first week. I think it's the, actually the second week. Uh, I think it's like it's actually the double D is just three weeks away. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, he he'll be on. That'll be a special. I was on with him one time before in uh, inappropriate characters. Uh, yeah, he was on his nice. show, and you're saying he's it's not his show, but it's his regular. Yeah. It's the regular show that he's on. He honestly, I don't know why he doesn't live stream more. Whenever he does, it's a good time. He gets a great turnout too. Awesome. Um, he could, uh, you know, I'm sure he could really pack him in himself. But uh, you know, he's he's busy too. He's he's working on his products, so we will talk about that when he's on. Um, yep. And, and if and, anybody uh, was interested, uh, Double D said to remind about the NASA thing. You said that that was interesting about the planets in the sky. Yeah, Check yeah. that out. It's yeah, just it all it cool. was. I, you can YouTube it. It was just something about as if the planets were as close to us as the moon is close to us, yeah. what the sky would look like. Super interesting. And what movie does everyone have to watch? Oh, Honeymoon in Vegas. I don't know why you <laughs> wouldn't have watched it already. <laughs> and remember uh, on uh, the Dungeon Delver here, as you can see, uh, Thursday, um, Thursday night. Uh, so that's tomorrow with Earl Otis, the legendary, my favorite D and D artist of all time. I I will I will do my best to watch that. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I am gonna be there. I see a Dee's and Debbie's gods behind him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yep. for sure. Yeah, that's him. Legendary. So I don't know how Dungeon Delver got that one, but uh, God bless you. That was a good pull. Actually, nice. you know what? I'm sorry. We could probably get Greg to get. Uh, Greg has hired him for um oh really for stuff yeah oh so, you know what I remember yeah, him mentioning for, for, for that. Yeah. yeah and I have talked to Greg too I said Greg I said whenever you're ready you can come on he's working on a, a game that's going to be awesome so we will promote the hell out of that thing and he and was we'll, he was very gracious he's like thank you so much he's just very busy he's traveling now he's he's doing this he's he's working trying to get it done so we understand but our friend Greg uh, we miss him and um. Yeah, he he will be on uh, when he has a little time to uh, come up and breathe. Maybe he's giving it a little bit of a break because he realizes how much of a man crush Gavin has on him. <laughs> yeah, sir. Who, who wouldn't? Uh, <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> okay. um, guys, guys. <laughs> yeah, so check out uh, Dungeon Delver uh, tomorrow and the uh, the great Errol Otis. Um, I'm sure he's going to get a great uh, turnout for that. Okay, guys, that's all.
Um, we will, of course, be back here next week, uh, and I'll probably have a video in between. So um, you guys take care. Have a great uh, rest of the night, and uh, I will play you out. Peace. Yeah, man. Well, turn it up, man. Let's just go in and, like, kill all the orcs, right? They're the bad guys. Who gives a shit? We just hack and slash and we loot their dead bodies, right? Hack and slash, kill them all, you know, conquer the infidels. Boy, that campaign sounds like a barrel of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Are you just a dream? Double D. A dream to some. A nightmare to others! Somebody who's who's opening a refrigerator and leaning in, right, is the language of a woman. Somebody who's opening their refrigerator and being cut off halfway through that lean is the voice of a, like a mermaid or a siren, right? Orcs are just like evil elves, right? And they were like made by like an evil god. Honestly, guys like me can't can't leave soon enough. We gotta put a little hot sauce on the taco. You know what I mean? We want this dwarf to be the dwarfiest dwarf. Right, right, right. We right. want the elf to be the elfiest elf. And just the dashiest dash of Tabasco. <laughs> Their voices need to carry across water. I'm a creative. Um, it's a huge drain, right? Because fans can be awful. You're not in Transylvania anymore, Crystal. We don't talk vampire. When you Ooh, say ouch. white lives matter, they don't. White lives don't matter because white lives aren't a thing. I disagree. I disagree, Gary. Lutherville, Marina Del X, Otisburg. Otisburg. Who's this monster guy? She's got her own place. Man. Otisburg. It's a little bitty place. Otisburg. Okay, I just wipe it off. That's all. It's a little town. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. Craig! Craig Sandwich! Thank you. I enjoyed having you here. You're a very good co host. Hey there, it's your boy Double D, and I want to tell you about a great offer from our friends over at Neckbeardia. That's right. We all love James and Megan, and I am happy to say they love us too. That's why they are offering a 10% discount on everything in their store just for my audience. If you haven't done so already, check it out at the link in the description below. They work with a fantastic 3D artist to offer you miniatures with detail you have to see to believe. No need to print anything out. They will take care of that messy and smelly business on their end. All you need to do is pick out your next character or the next group of monsters your party is going to fight. They also have some pretty hilarious subclasses for you guys that are still playing 5th edition, all for less than a cup of coffee. They have Adventures, Atomic Punk 2160 by The Basic Expert, t-shirts and a lot more why not support people that don't hate you use the promo code dnd10 for 10 percent off your order and remember that shipping is free for orders over 50 pounds that's just a little bit over 60 us dollars visit them today and don't forget to use the promo code dnd10 what qualifies you to be a u.s senator you have 60 seconds Hi. Good night, everybody.